Nerds International proudly presents Coming at you live from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, it's me, Nick Lambslice, me, James Pumpkin, and me, Harrison Hunt, aka Winston Brown. And we are the The Tabletop Tabletop Twats. And this is an RPG show all about tabletop RPGs. And today we are coming at you with a bloody good show. Of course, I just need to quickly address that we have got a uh, an actual play for DCC RPG that um, we're going to do. That's going to be the very next uh, episode on this channel. But obviously, because of our recent trip to America, that's been delayed ever so slightly. So sorry about that. But today we've got an amazing show for you. We got the feedback side. We got what you've been slaying. We got the Chamber of Challenges. We got the main subject, which this time is going to be Con on the Con. Oh yes, which is a uh, convention we recently visited in America. Mm. And then we got Electro Letters, followed by our award-winning outro. Can't wait. Exactly. So first of all, let's get into feedback with the feedback side. The feedback side. The feedback side. The feedback side. The feedback section. The feedback section. So first of all, I've got some feedback. You know, this is the first. <laughs> I've just seen this. I've just looked. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the first feedback I ever received in person from a listener. I mean, yeah. it was a listener to one of my uh, other podcasts, but this is from a, uh, a lovely person called Emma Wakelin, who who told me in real life, right? She said to me, um, came up to me and said, said uh, it's just very good to put a, uh, a face to the voice. You know, I didn't think you'd look like that. And I said, well, what do you mean? And, and she said, well, um, you just don't look as, as British as I thought you would. You know, I thought, I thought you'd look, you know, I thought you'd look like one of those proper basement dwellers, you know, proper, proper, you know, uh, real, real nerd, real ugly. Teeth all over the place. <laughs> and I thought, I, I just thought, you know, what? I didn't. I didn't know how to take that. Does oh. that mean I'm better looking than you thought, which is nice, or do you think that my voice sounds really ugly? Yeah, <laughs> it's one of those. We don't know how to do it. Yeah, I don't know how to take. Sounds that really one. ugly. So uh, yeah, thanks, Emma. But well, we got news for you. None of us are ugly. We're actually incredibly good looking. Yeah, um, we're all. This, this is this is a side career for us. We're all models. <laughs> Right. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Next up, Trevor Hurst. He says, well, after the last Raven Lord AP, I decided to drop my Amazon Prime membership and use that extra cash to support you twats instead of those corporate whores. <laughs> really nice job on the editing and all of that. Thank Thanks, Trev. Well, what you don't know is we're also corporate whores. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this, um, this podcast is actually completely, completely sponsored by uh, Accurist. <laughs> and the Ministry of Defence exactly <laughs> those great guys at the Ministry of Defence they, they do they do a great great job and uh, thanks to the uh, to, to the millions of pounds they pour into this we, we give you great content nice one Queen <laughs> thanks <laughs> cheers your highness and next up Ardak comes in he says guys pardon me a moment while I fangasm you guys are amazing I'm a recent DCC convert and Ravenloft is my favourite OSR setting. You guys are doing it up in style. Thanks for everything. Ardak. He's also talking about Ravenlord, our AP. So thank you very much for yeah, that. Yeah, thank you. Cheers, You're Ardak. Welcome. Yeah, so thank yeah, we've got, we got one slightly weird feedback there and a couple of really nice ones. So thank you very much for that, guys. And thanks for the Queen and the Ministry of Defence <laughs> for everything that you guys do for us. Love you long time. <laughs> All right, so let's get on to what you've been slaying and talk about what we've been playing. Ooh. <laughs> Oi! Yeah? What you slaying? Alright, so first up, recently we played Thrilling Tales. So this is a kind of uh, very cliche, kind of pulpy setting. I think Indiana Jones, that kind of thing. Set during uh, World War II, mainly, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we played a game, uh, it was called The Curse of the Mummy. The curse of the mummy, <laughs> and uh, yeah, this was I. This was just basically every cliche from from sort of like pulp novels thrown yeah. into one, right? <laughs> yeah. It was great. The characters that we had, we had a uh, a boxer, a gumshoe, a femme fatale. We had a mobster. We had all of these guys. Oh, an ace pilot. Mm-hmm. All of them <laughs> thrown into one, and they're investigating a murder that happened at a museum. And uh oh, they investigate the the sort of sarcophagus, and it's empty for some reason. But they find 
scraps of cloth in all the dead museum guys' hands. They find that the ceremonial knife has gone missing. Uh-huh. And then they find that the museum guy is actually in league with the Nazis and that he's injected something into someone in the museum. And everyone immediately start, around the table starts going, oh, Mummy. <laughs> <laughs> it was as cliche as things could possibly be. And but, equally as amazing. Yeah, so for that reason, it was, it was amazing. We had Indiana Jones blasting as the soundtrack. Um, uh, guys, you can probably hear some noises coming from upstairs. There's works going on upstairs. Still. So, uh, yeah, still. So It's like the longest project I know. known to man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but if it, I'm sorry about that. So if you hear noises coming from upstairs, I apologise. But it's anyway... Not the, it's not our captives. During this game, it was bloody funny because what happened was they then investigate the, the guy, um, go to his house and find one of his, his sort of like... Uh, his like guys that's been working on this mummy project with him. And they're chasing him through the streets of London accidentally. They don't run him over, but as they're, they're chasing him with the car, one uh, one of the guys gets to him and opens the door to try and smack him with it, kills him in one hit, <laughs> slicing him in half. Yeah. Uh, okay, we got any leads? We got any leads, guys? Because we just killed the main lead. Yeah. In public. Yeah. In yeah. Co- yeah, so, yeah. They find a train ticket on his severed legs and find that the the, uh, the main guy who opened the museum, this guy called Dr. Matt Ainsworth, thought it was like, it was like Matt Ainsworth. Ainsworth. <laughs> Or something like this yeah. has gone to Canvey Island up in South End on Sea, and once they get there, they see that he's rented a plane, and they start giving chase in their plane that they just hijacked, oh, and yes. they see that he's on there on the plane with a mummy in the back, and oh no. <laughs> <laughs> the mummy starts making all sorts of weird noises, conjuring sand at them. There was the 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 players were in two planes, and the mummy and the Nazi were in another plane, and they started giving chase. It was all sorts of epic. It I love was... how we got the second plane. Yeah, what was it what was his name? The bird. Oh yeah, they called him. They called him the bird, and they nicked a plane from a uh, an aviation place in Red Hill, which is a real life place. Yep. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was crazy. There was a plane chase against the Nazi and a mummy. They crashed it. They found a, a Nazi submarine yeah. where Hitler was there. They yeah. they um, crashed the plane into it, killing Hitler. It was it was all sorts <laughs> it was of ridiculous. So good. <laughs> but this is a setting for Savage Worlds. Um, is thrilling tales and it's great fun. It's mm-hmm. it's silly and I could imagine playing a campaign in it. Oh, easy. Yeah. It would be so much fun. I, and as we said uh, during this, we want to jump back into it every so often, maybe mm-hmm. not once every six months, and just play a one shot with the same characters. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I said fun. I said to these guys, but you killed Hitler, and you were like, yeah, but Hitler would never just send send himself. It sh- it should be either a clone mm-hmm. or a twin yeah. or something yeah. like this, body yeah. double, yeah, yeah. or robot Hitler, yeah, yeah. So that was awesome. And next up, we played Call of Cthulhu Cold Warning, GM'd Ooh, by yes. Nick. We played part one of this. So uh-huh. Nick, what was this all about? Okay, so this was a online game that we uh, we invited our, uh, our lovely listeners to get involved with. We wanted to start doing some more online stuff. Uh, this is a classic Call of Cthulhu. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Call of Cthulhu. Uh, so we're set in 1920s Maine, New England, um, and it's a bunch of investigators looking into the mysterious suicide of a uh, of a doctor's patient, and um, also the the strange goings on uh, between his wife, pregnant wife, and the brother of the deceased. Um, yeah, so classic investigation. They've travelled all the way up to a like a skiing lodge up in the middle of nowhere, uh, trying to find this guy. Can't find him at the moment. Yeah, because it turns out the the suicide had some sort of mysterious circumstances yep. surrounding it. Because it he he was there was nothing that wrong in his life which would cause him to suicide and mm-hmm. stuff like this. And all of our characters had like extremely dark pasts. Like yeah. one of them. Had had his ship taken over by zombies and survived in there for twenty five hours without oh any God, sleep yeah. and all of this stuff. And we um, went back to this guy's um, house and found that he'd been frozen solid, completely and, frozen. Yeah. Um, there was uh, it was it was a very very interesting uh, sort of mission. And we yeah we tracked down uh, the one one of the people involved in this suicide supposed suicide back to this this hunting lodge. And uh, yeah, when we got there, we we then had to continue down this path into these woodlands, and were just attacked by wolves. Mm-hmm. And that's where we had to stop the adventure. Yes, yeah, which was which was. 
kind of a shame, but it we're going to continue it next week. Yep. So I'm going to wrap forward it up. to that. But it's really good fun. It's, uh, it, it, it was a Kickstarter uh, adventure, actually. It was an old adventure that was never finished by quite a well known writer. Um, got left on the moth pile in the 80s, and someone found the manuscript, finished it, and released it. So Yeah, that's yeah. what I found really interesting about it because it's such a great adventure because it's it's one of those ever increasing circles kind of yeah. adventures. Like you, whenever you think you found the answer, that it, it, it always continues and it's proper horror. Like mm. it really, really is. And yeah, it sort of turns out that the guy, uh, his was it his brother, um, seems to be implicated in the suicide and might have murdered him and things like maybe this, or, yeah or something yeah. like this. Stuart so Sutton, yeah. It turns out that Stuart Sutton, his brother, um, uh, owns this hunting lodge, and that's why we've gone there to investigate yeah. it. And that's basically where mm-hmm. we've got to it so far. I'd like to point out that um, we had uh, a couple people. Uh, join us uh, is it Daryl and Kitty mm-hmm. is that the only two we had wasn't it no no we had Daniel Ir- Irwin oh, Irw- sorry, Irwin. sorry Irwin as Mr well. Irwin yeah my, my brain's gone fuzzy since the since the jet the judge will he but it was um, it was Kitty's first time really in doing that properly, and, and apparently she had an absolute blast. And I tell you what, as a spectator to a newbie into that world, she was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She took it in her such, stride, didn't she? Yeah, yeah, such great role player, mm-hmm. and I absolutely enjoyed having her along. So, and it was great as well because it was Nick's first time GMing Call of Cthulhu. Yes, and well, yeah. yeah. You were a long time fan of it. But yeah, it was your first time. Mm-hmm. And I think you did a great job Thank with you. all your NPCs and oh, stuff like this. It. And I tell you what, what, there was, what, a, there was one point that was really fun because there was a recording that was on this guy's gramophone that Nick was supposed to play but he had the recording on his phone and it was really funny because the guy was trying to play it out of his phone uh, out of his gramophone and, but Nick couldn't get the recording to play on his phone he was like bloody thing I can't get it to work and he's like just a minute just a minute oh this bloody thing it never works and he just kept on trying and trying to get it to work and yeah. it was so funny but you did a cracking job with, with all of your NPCs there was one bit where we were also trying to get by medical kits. <laughs> oh, yeah. And this guy was like, um, it's just a bit of duct tape in a box. You can have that for $50, but if you want a bit of duct tape in a box with some uh, with some antiseptic, that'll be 51 quid. <laughs> yeah. And the guy that the, 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 you guys were trying to find a car and you found a guy polishing the car and then after talking to him for ages found out he don't, he don't even drive and he was just given the car and it's just been sitting there the whole time what I liked is you found the perfect balance because you know we like a little bit of humour a little Quite bit a of little comic bit relief yeah. but when it came for the serious moments you kept it serious did it feel I, dark though because I was yeah. trying oh yeah, yeah yeah it was dark as hell and, and that's what I say like when it was time to be serious you kept mm-hmm. it serious and when, when there were moments where you could have a bit of comic relief it was fine and it was there. Thank you very much. And I love the uh, fact that the uh, in this this uh, adventure in particular, um, the weather plays a big part, and you really get that feeling of feeling cold. I think. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. And especially with the artwork, because Nick, we played on Roll Twenty, so Nick cut out all the all the images and and pasted them onto the uh, onto the Roll Twenty screen. And seeing all of that brilliant artwork, especially the guy frozen over mm. sitting at his desk, it was creepy as fuck. I yeah. loved it. Tell you what, Roll Twenty is the perfect platform for it. Well, it was oh, our yeah. first guy, wasn't it? Well, you guys have played before. Yeah. I've never, I've never. Played played or GM'd on it so I was a little bit nervous um, yeah you smashed it, it though it's, uh, it, it does it you don't need it does it all for you it's so easy and um, yeah it was a pleasure to play I think it I worked think, really well I actually think it, the, the Call of Cthulhu works better on it yeah, in certain yeah. ways yeah. because mm-hmm. cause all the roles are so much easier on there yeah because yeah. it gives you the type of success whether it's a, a hard success or, or an extreme, an extreme, extreme, extreme success yeah. yeah 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 perfect so yeah if you can find a copy of Cold Warning good luck to you but um, <laughs> but um, I would I would also just say pick it up if you can because yeah, it's, it's really really it's great very good fun um, next up obviously on the What You've Been Saying segment we like to talk about things that we bought Ooh. and this is going to be a longie because I've been at a, a con uh, I'll try and keep it short. I'm going to try and keep it concise. Um, but I've been at the con, and uh, I also had a package arrive while I was away at the con. Ooh. Oh yes! So Ooh. bloody finally, and I'm going to start a new segment on oh, this yes. called called, um, called uh, Good Old Pinnacle, <laughs> right? And and uh, I'll do a little jingle for you. <laughs> Good old Pinnacle. <laughs> and um, this is it. what I'm going to do here, right? Is I'm going to just uh, I'm going to hand you guys something, right? Oh so, no! So here we go, right? right close your eyes, close your eyes. Here we go. So Kickstarter, oh, right? I kickstarted this over a year ago, and this is my <laughs> this is my stretch goal that I got for this a year ago. Oh, of course. Look at these flimsy ass fucking bookmarks I got. Damn bookmarks. Hey man, <laughs> I only had to spend I only had to spend ninety quid to get these stretch goals, guys. Oh. Oh look, man. it's a picture of Flash Gordon and all of his compadres on the front but on the back you've got some good old advertising <laughs> yeah. thanks for that pinnacle and then they should have uh, they should, you should take a leaf out of DCC's book right 
Firstly, their bookmarks are free, but secondly, they've actually got mechanics on the back. And they're, yeah, they're, they've got character sheets. Yeah, why didn't they and, just put and some their, their bookmarks are thicker? Next up, right, here's what we got. We've got another stretch goal. Oh, here's going? the stretch goal. So oh, these are cliffhanger they? cards, right? Oh. Well, guess how many you get? You get about five. And, <laughs> and not to mention, they're thin as fuck. Oh my right? god, yeah. I mean, so, so once you've used those, you use them all five fucking times. The players will be bored of them, right? Yep. So, oh, brilliant. Oh, well done, Vinicor. Aren't you the best? <laughs> See, right? I'll tell you what. If they were of better quality, then they'd maybe be the slightest bit more worth it. Right, exactly. Slightest. Next up, um, for in, in uh, good old Pinnacle news, right? They've just announced they've they've hit four hundred and fifty. I think four hundred and fifty. Half a million. Now. It was half a million. Half it was over million. half a million. Half a million. Half a million dollars on their latest Savage Worlds Adventure Edition Kickstarter, which we right? have backed. So they, <laughs> what, what they've released in yep. in that is is um, cards for vehicles. Uh, items, weapons, right? They've released them in PDF and JPEG only. Yeah. Oh no, physical. No, no, f- no physical. You got I half a mil. Get pinnacle, pinnacle. Oh yeah. So um, that that is um, what I got for the the. But I will say this: um, the books came and they are absolutely gorgeous. Oh, oh my god. Yeah. So there you go, guys. Have a look, dig in because these are beautiful books. Um, another thing I wanted to say this is another sort of good old pinnacle moment right so I want you just to look down on on, on this um, uh, GM screen right on the right hand side on the bottom left you'll see there is a, a, a new or altered skill what does it say there Fever. Yeah, so that's so Saturday Night Fever you got there. So oh, yeah. what the hell? Little, little, little spelling so error there. Replaces so lock picking and add safe cracking, sleight of hand, etc. Yeah, so it's supposed to be thievery. So that's good old Pinnacle. Oh no! Yeah. Who proof check? Oh, who proof check that? I don't know. Me. The book's incredible, though. I must say. The book's no, they're, they're it's amazing, and I'm I'm really glad to have it. It's a very nice GM screen. If even if there is a typo, on we're it. all just having a laugh. We're all just having a laugh. We're having a laugh. But um, I'm, yeah, I did jump on the uh, Savage yeah, Worlds adventure. I did. did. I went for the box as well. Me too. I'm yeah. looking forward to it because it's going to be amazing. But that's it for Flash Gordon. It's a beautiful book. The it artwork is, is amazing. Yeah. Hardback. Um, very and nice. The new artwork's great, and the the artwork that they got from the comics is also incredible. So mm-hmm. I'm chuffed for that mm-hmm. next up I as for what I got at Con on the Cob they had some amazing booths there and I will we'll get into that a bit later but I got Mutant Cruel Classics A Fallen Star for All so this is a level 1 adventure and I'll just give you a quick blurb so a meteor strike in the Taboo Crater country opens up a huge chasm or chasm <laughs> in which lies a largely intact city for the ancient ones the resulting land rush to go claim the newly available cache of ancient artifacts draws interested parties from all over Terra AD. Ooh. So that's basically it. I also got Mutant Cruel Classics, the data orb of the Metakind. Oh. And this is the most the most holy of ancient relics, the data orb of the Metakind, has been passed down between tribal shamans and mystic mutants from generation to generation for thousands of years. You can successfully bond with the Golden Orb's AI. Terabytes of arcane technological data can be yours, if only you can survive its use. Ooh. So this book isn't an adventure, it's just a whole book that's one artifact. So it's terabytes of data oh, in one right. book. So I wanted to get this because it's like a supplement of loads of data so cool. and it's just one thing. The whole book is the data orb itself. Wow, so, that's yeah. so cool. Yeah. Yeah, well, you were pleased to know as well your, your, other, your other adventure. So I put I put some MCC uh, adventure modules on my Christmas list mm. and they're fucking sold out everywhere. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my uh, God. Well, they, they had a bunch of Not them. Not even Leisure people. Games have got them. Oh, I should have got you some. Oh, never mind. No, it doesn't matter. But yeah, um, I also, because the convention is hosted by Andy Hopp the writer of um, Low Life mm-hmm. um, I got a whole lot oh, I got a whole lot mate. because first of all my um, uh, co-host of, of the Wild Die podcast my Savage Worlds podcast he he bought me uh, Low Life the main book um, for review on that podcast and then he also gave me um, Holy Crap oh um, yes so Low Life is a, a book um, basically where there's this um, kind of event that, that kind of destroyed the earth or changed it and it was known as the flush the and flush not many people <laughs> not many people know what it was like it's theorized that it was a bomb or a meteor or a nuke or something or whatever mm-hmm. but nobody knows what it was and all that was left were the the races that could survive this so it's things like cockroaches uh, mutated humans um 
Uh, but they're they're so unrecognisable as humans; it's unbelievable. There's mutated and, foods. Yeah, Twinkies. mutated foods known as uh, cremphilians. <laughs> yeah, and um, there's aliens called UFOs. UFO and things like this. So the main book uh, is is like the whole setting, and it's one of the most detailed settings yeah. ever. I had a little peep over it whilst Harrison was reading into it, and it it is it is just fantastic. I knew it would be. Yeah, and then holy crap is the is all of the uh, religions. Sects, yeah, that's yeah, it. and it's called the great sect change yeah, operation it, yeah <laughs> and then there's the whole whole a uh, gadabout's guide to keister island so Ke- the keister island is known as the butthole of the earth i was about to say isn't keister a word for bum yeah, yeah it yeah, is yeah, yeah. so it looks like the butthole of the earth but it's probably a crater where a bomb hit got yeah so that's what people think it is i guess <laughs> i haven't actually read that one yet and then i got a heap of creeps and a heap of peeps so yeah. a heap of peeps is like either npcs or pc cards mm-hmm. and oh heap, they're cool yeah, yeah and they a heap really of cool. creeps is uh, like enemies mm-hmm. and then right. I got the misadventure deck so the adventure deck are cards in Savage Worlds that you can play whenever you want something to happen so, yeah. so the players will get one they can play it whenever and that's pretty much it I got nice. everything you got the whole oh, I got yeah. all yeah. Caboodle, mate. I'm not going to lie Andy is he's a bloody genius mate the yeah. amount of thought that's gone into everything it's its its just absolutely fantastic and mind blowing but and have it's a look got... at the book because for a um, for a post apocalyptic <laughs> setting there's nothing quite like it I don't think because it's oh, it's no. funny it's weird the, the sense of humour in it really reminds me of Terry Pratchett because the book yeah. is written from the perspective of somebody in that universe so the guy is, uh, the person that wrote it is a get about who, who basically um, is a person that explores the land and he tells you about all of the stuff in there so when he writes it, he writes it with a sense of humour and and as a person that's explored everything. So cool. And Full colour art. Yeah, he's, yeah he's, it's he's, no surprise he that the artwork... Who draws the art? Andy. Andy. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. And you know, the funny thing about it is that it's littered with sense of humour. So so in this in the setting, for example, um, nothing is measured in normal measurements. Um, everything is measured in yachts. And there's a map in the Keystone Island book where, where it says on the map the key to show you how far everything is it says one yacht equals one yacht <laughs> it's it's like the perfect so cool. kind of humor where it's 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 silly but it's not dumb yeah. it's not dumb it's like it's smart silly man yeah it's, exactly it's, it's, it's so full well of thought appendices. out it's so cool mm. And it's even got LARPing rules in there oh, as well. Oh, that would be fun, wouldn't it? The underwear. Yeah. Imagine trying to dress it's, up in that stuff. Well, what they call it is playing dirty. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, and in addition to that, I also got uh, nice. Lamentations of the Flame Princess. Oh, yes. This is an OSR game with incredible art. Uh, we'll talk about this a bit later. And an 18 rating. It's 18 rated, mm. and it's got oh, it's a, lot of, um, a lot of titillating stuff in there, a lot of dirty oh, yeah. stuff in there. But it's it's actually a very, very good game as well. It's known as weird role-playing, and it's it's weird OSR game. So, But how did you come across buying it? Well, I bought it off a mate, actually. Exactly. Because so. we, we played it. So yeah. we'll, we'll get into Lamentations of the Flame Princess later. Okay, cool. So, uh, because we actually played it. Nice. And the very last thing that I picked up was the Dungeon Crawl Classics Peril on the Purple Planet box set. Ooh. This is the last box set that I don't own uh, for DCC. And I'll give you the brief for this one. So this is the Purple Planet where tribes of man-beasts wage an endless war beneath the dying sun where mighty death orms rule the wastes, befouled winds whistle through ancient crypts, and forests of fungi flourish in the weirdling light, where ancient technologies offer life or a quick death. Ooh. And this box set comes with, like, three adventures to play Excellent. in in the Purple Planet setting. So, yeah, awesome. And that's basically it. some serious got. loot. I know, crazy. Serious crazy. loot. Harrison yeah. was br- carrying it all on this rucksack that he borrowed from his mum. Um, and it was fuck me it was heavy as it shit was so heavy. books are so bloody heavy it took me up to right up to my weight limit on my bag so, <laughs> just yeah. the books alone I think came up to almost 7 kilos wow yeah crazy worth it though well the thing about it is is that over there because they're not being shipped to England and then that, that cost added on yep it meant that I, everything was so affordable yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. So it was, yeah. it was really, really good. I, I, I couldn't pass up the chance to buy stuff from the Goodman Games booth. we got to make low life, no pay. We so do. Oh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. We've got to do it because there, there are so many things in that setting that I, as I was reading it, I was thinking of you guys. Yeah. You, you can play a pimp. Oh, yeah. And, and yes. you can get have take edges and things where you, you're you better at slapping women. <laughs> oh, no, trust <laughs> me. It's good. I, I was just no. like, for this podcast, yes. it's perfect. No, no. Oh, yeah, no. It's, it's just beautifully thank you out. andy yeah thanks andy and he <laughs> signed buddy. my book as That's well amazing. so yeah, yeah. Per- perfect um so uh before we go on to the main subject 
we're going to go into the Chamber of Challenges and I'll explain it once we're there. Come on in, let's go. Welcome to the Chamber of Challenges. Chamber of Challenges. The Chamber of Challenges. Chamber of Challenges. The Chamber of Challenges. (laughs) <laughs> so the reason we're doing the challenges before the main subject is because some of this stuff, it may kind of uh, ruin what we're going to talk about. And I don't want to, uh, we might accidentally spoil some of the answers to yeah. some of the questions. Okay. So obviously James and I went to Con on the Cob, which is a convention. And uh, basically what I'm going to do is in this section for Dragon or Blaggin, I'm going to ask you some questions about Con on the Cob and you've got to answer these questions. And we'll get to, to what the meat of Con on the Cob is about and we're going to talk about it properly. But before we do, Nick, these questions are all for you. Okay. Let's see if you can answer these, okay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Con on the Cob, being a convention, is host to many strange characters. But which one of these was a real person at the event? One. A man who would paint elaborate portraits of the people at his table while he should be while he should have been concentrating on the game. Two, a man who would make chainmail armor while he should have been concentrating on the game. <laughs> or three, a man who would take loud phone calls to sex lines while he should have been concentrating on the game. Uh, I'm going to go for the portrait one. Answer A. Wrong. Ah, oh, what <laughs> the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> It was number two, a man who would chain make mail. chain mail armor while yeah. we should have been concentrating on what, the game. Just like on an anvil. And no, so so what he had like... is he had a big box of chain links, yeah. and right. he would just sit there making chain mail while he should have been concentrating was on the game. Chain mail underwear. Was it noisy? Mainly. Yeah, uh, oh. it wasn't. I guess it was noisy. And this guy was very tall. And while he wasn't mm. making chain mail, he would stand over people's desks yeah, with his spectate. Le- spectate with his legs astride like he was the shit. Yeah. Oh, As if he was, you know, he was like, yes, I'm overseeing this and this. You're doing a good job. And, and you have food. noticed, well, I do have chain mail pants on. Yeah, it, it, oh, was, it was so weird. Wow, that's weird. And everyone just called him chain mail guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> chain mail guy. I love his pajamas. He's like a full set of armor. He's like, this. This is wildly uncomfortable. It's tearing my pubes out. Oh, why did he bring it with him, though? <laughs> no, that's what he does. I don't know. He sells it at every convention, apparently, so he kind of makes it to order. Yeah. While you're there. Yep. So why doesn't nah. he just do it as a job and have a booth? I don't yeah, fucking yeah. know. Oh, my God. So, okay. whilst at the convention, there was an auction room where attendees could take their old stuff and auction it off to other people. Sadly, this room had little to no air conditioning. <laughs> But which of these smells was the real smell of the room as described by James Clark, our co-host? One, a fart chamber. Two, B.O. mixed with weak old garbage juice. Three, a really fat, sweaty woman. Or four, the chemical toilets at a music festival. (gasps) Oh, God. I'm going to go for (laughs) B.O. mixed with bin juice. Okay, you're wrong again. (laughs) Ah, shit. (laughs) What was it, James? It was three fat smelly woman. Fat smelly woman. That's yeah. all I could smell in there. You smell a lot of fat smelly women, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, love. Oh. No, it just no. It was just it smelled like um, uh, one unfortunate lady had festered in there for a week before oh, we came in. It's wow. very specific though, isn't it? Was that in the auction? Maybe. No, know? it was the room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> auction lot number thirty-five. A fat, fat sweaty, sweaty woman. woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take her. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. So, so did you spend much time in there? We we, we went yeah, in there twice, did. once to have a look, and then once to do our final bids. <laughs> and uh, and when we did our final bids, we had to queue up, and this the this smell. Oh. A woof. Wow. Yeah, Woofters. It's palatable. Next on, light a, a scented candle. Yeah, <laughs> do something. <laughs> okay, during a night known by some as Really Bad Friday, where people got too drunk, an in game incident happened during a game of Fiasco that caused Gary McCallum to play an X card to stop this in game incident from happening. Which of these is the real incident? A. Someone had sex with a pig and put way too much effort into their depiction of it. Two, someone dug Gary's character's corpse up to bring it back to their hotel room. Or three, someone was having sex with Gary's character after he'd had his head shot off. I think it's the pig one. Wrong again. Oh, shit. It was. Somebody was having sex with Gary's character after he's had his head shot off. (laughs) But 
Bonus bonus thing, the pig thing did also happen. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, that was just not why Gary played the X card. For Gary to pull an X card, of all people, Gary. That's what yeah, we said. For those that oh, don't wow. know, Gary is the host of the Murder Hobo show, and he, he, is, he is a person with no limits. No, he's clinically insane. So the fact that he played an X card... <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, he so, must so, have really upset the He man got a bit of paper, scrawled an X on it, and held it up and goes, nope, I'm doing it, I'm playing an X card. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations, James. <laughs> Before I ask this next question, I should state that all of the answers to this are completely untrue and are for comedy purposes only. <laughs> but while at the con, I accidentally committed a massive crime. Which of these was the real crime? <laughs> One, I accidentally sold alcohol to a minor because he looked 18, forgetting that the legal drinking age in America is 21. Oh, yeah. Two, I accidentally smoked a rather large amount of weed, thinking I was being offered a cigarette, then was sick in a bin. Three, I stole a car. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, ding. But you're going right. to have to pick one, Nick. Uh, gonna I'm going to go for the underage alcohol thing. You are correct. Yay. But also that answer is definitely not, not true, true. And it didn't happen. And it's for comedy purpose only. But if it did, <laughs> this, yeah, is what happened. Uh, it, this is what happened. <laughs> um, I was standing around just having a chat with some people. And these, this guy came up to me. He looked 18, but yeah. definitely didn't look 21. And he mm-hmm. just went, hey, are those your beers on the table? Um, can I give you five bucks for three of them? And I went, yeah, fine. And he just gave me a fiver. And then and then he just took three beers out. And then Gary came, came up to me, if this did happen, which it didn't. And then and then he went, hey, buddy, you just, just sold beer to a minor. And I was just like, oh, fuck, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the legal drinking age here is 21. But it didn't happen. But I didn't happen, yeah. so yeah. don't worry about it. So we went to Fantasyland there. and Brilliant. That's... It's all part of the game. Yeah, because that's just a fake question that didn't happen. Didn't happen at all. And one, one last question. Yes. One guy at the con who consistently wore nothing but pyjama bottoms and a Harry Potter bathrobe, asked us to go into his hotel room and perform an act. What was that act? One, kill a bug. Two, spank his bare bottom. Three, clean his room. Four, call his wife a cunt. (laughs) Swat a bug. It was number four. It was number Call four. Call his wife a cunt. Yes. And it, I did it. <laughs> was she in there? Yeah. Yeah. He said, he said, I just want you to get in my hotel room and, because uh, you're British, right? And I just want you to um, just call everyone in there a cunt. Like that. And I was like, all right, yeah, I'll do it. Because he just wasn't letting up. He asked wow. Harrison Yeah, and he then just me. wouldn't leave us alone. And he was just like, you, you're British, right? Can you come, come into my room? Come on, room, come on, wife. Yeah, yeah. He was, so I'm I, a hot body, everybody. That's I how he there. sounded I as went well. in there and I really forcibly oh, Londonized it. And I went, oh, you thought it. I was like, yeah. I was like, you're all fucking cunts. And they were going, ah! No, the girl was just like, oh, you don't want to come from England? And I was like, yeah. She's like, oh, hello. And then he was like, you're meant to leave after you said that. And I was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> don't talk to my wife. Don't make eye contact so with I just my awkwardly wife. backed out. I like there. it when you uh, start speaking to an American person and they go, oh, you're from England? And you're like, yeah. Like, oh, you know Steve? <laughs> No, <laughs> sorry. Well, we did have one guy at the airport say to us that he went, "Tell Charles congratulations." Yeah, because it's so small, England. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not close personal thing. friends. Yeah, I, I know an English person. Uh, anyway, um, let's go on to the main subject. Yeah, uh, but before we do, speaking of the auction room, Nick, I won you a little gift. <gasps> so there you go, mate. What is it? This is uh, Call of Cthulhu: Curse of the Cthonians. No way. For very strange dark adventures for Call of Cthulhu amazing oh man I, don't so mention much. it mate if it smells of fat sweaty woman then I do apologise <laughs> oh, oh yes it does <laughs> <laughs> main subject main subject <clears throat> sorry Con on the Cob this is a uh, event hosted and created by Andy Hopp, look, creator of Low Life, little genius, looks exactly like Danny DeVito. Yeah, no, it's no lie, he does. And he knows it. And it's been running, <laughs> thus far, it's been running for 14 years. 14 Con on the Cobb's been going for 14 years? Yep. I know. Wow. That's only as many years as, as I've been alive. Oh, yeah, whoa. I'm only 14. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I look 30. When did he write Low Life? I don't know, man. I don't know. But he's been an artist for so many years right. anyway. So cool. the event, the premise of it, is a celebration of games, art, freaks and fun and the venue was the days in and suites in richfield ohio and let's talk about what what each of these refers to so the games are freaks and fun so the games it's basically role-playing games board games larps 
anything that you could possibly imagine in terms of nerd culture. Those are the games that are going to be played, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, so not video games. Not no video, video games. Well, actually, we did play a bit of Sonic the Hedgehog there. Yeah, but that oh, was okay. just us. That was just us. Okay. Yeah. And <laughs> every, got to play t- some Sonic. every time we played it, somebody would come over and be like, you're, you're playing Sonic? And then we were like, okay, we'll turn it off. <laughs> yeah. Because we wanted to... That's you Sonic know, I can hear. It was only because we were uh, just trying to keep ourselves occupied and then we didn't want to be rude. So we're just like, okay, we'll just turn it off now. Hey. But then the art, <laughs> that refers to... Uh, the There was art for sale mm-hmm. and you could also see Andy Hopp's artwork everywhere. The sculptures, yeah, also, like, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah sculptures. There's, there's yeah. miniature painting. Uh, all right. And stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, and there are banners everywhere with artwork. There people's artwork for sale. That was awesome. The fun... That refers to there was uh, drunkenness. For example, they had things like uh, nights where there was like a, a night called a fairy drinking party or something oh like this. God. And upstairs, all they had was just it was free booze um, where you could just go up, get cocktails, things like this. And everyone was just invited just to gather up and have a good old drunken night. Lovely. There were games such as board games that has fun and fun of all types encouraged. Don't matter what you're doing, just have some fun. Have they some also fun, had yeah. mini golf as well. Yeah, oh, brilliant that is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they had fairy. Karaoke, which was karaoke, and Two D Six, a nerd uh, nerdcore um, hip hop band, were playing. And of course, Andy Hop hosted a night where he played a game called Gazoink, which is a drinking card game that he yeah, made. Brand Gazoink. new one as well, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he was he he, he came to us on, on the, one of the first nights and was like, "Hey guys, I'm playing some Gazoink upstairs. If you want to join them, like, what the fuck is that?" But yeah, I really wanted to go, but we didn't. We get did. The we did actually hop along, but the table was fully crammed, so we were just oh, like, "Hey, how's it going? Hey, nice to see you. Okay, bye." They all just went, <laughs> yeah. What, uh, can can Andy handle his liquor? Uh, I assume so. Well, he arrived. He came over to me on the Friday, um, which is the as as we mentioned earlier, the bad bad Friday. Um, and yeah, I was kind of feeding him a few shots of whiskey. So I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good lad. The last of the freaks. This yep. refers to basically ev- everyone is welcome. It don't matter what walk of life you come from. If, if you um, uh, come from a walk of life where people call you a freak, if you're an RPG player, if you're any in any way different, you're welcome. Yeah. That's basically yeah. it. To the point where they had a, a night where there was a kink party that was going on. They had a drag night. Kink not, not, party? Yeah. Yeah. Is it like rude? Yeah, rude. Oh, and yeah. that's not to say those things you should be regarded as a freak, but like I, I think in some circles people would call. As in, that. they made a freak. As in, like she a freak. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> she, she freaky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so it was cool, and those things are celebrated here, which Yay. is which is cool. So yeah. Why good. not? Good. Why the hell not? Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's cool. So that's what those things refer to, and the venue itself was in this hotel, which wasn't the nicest place but what was cool about it was is that all the hotel rooms are right next to the gaming area Perfect. and yeah. this, this works twofold first of all it's cool because throughout the day you want to go back to your hotel room and get something it's right there mm-hmm. but in another sense as soon as you go to bed everyone's shouting their fucking asses off <laughs> oh, man. so that same guy <laughs> that said call my wife a C yeah. he, he basically spent every goddamn night staying up till 6 in the morning shouting his goddamn ass practicing off in the his, gaming area practicing these spells Oh my god! Practicing is is fucking t- tobacco spitting. Oh god! Oh no! Uh, no, well, no, no, we no, just, just... no, not for real. But <laughs> and all we could hear was shouting. Every night I wore earplugs. Was he Larry? Sleeping was he? tablets. And, Did he and... not sleep then? Oh god! It, it never. I, as far as I know. But yeah. it was just crazy loud the whole time. So that was one drawback. It was brutal. But it was a gahori. Brutal. Yeah. But it was awesome, and they yeah. had loads of tables. They had the mini golf right there, so it was awesome. Was and there normal hotel patrons there? Or was it all just? I'm sure there was people. No, just, there, imagine there, coming on that weekend. There oh, was, but they would have been yeah. purposely uh, given given the far away Ear rooms. defenders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. already defenders. Yeah. yeah. So um, let's get into what we played. Right. Yes. So first of all, um, James and I played in Genesis. Oh yes. Um, Terranoth. And we played a game uh, hosted by our mate Stefan Dragonspawn. So yeah. what I'm going to do for you now is I'm going to play a very, very short interview uh, with uh, Gary McCallum. Mm-hmm. Because he was a first-time Genesis player at, as well. Yeah. And yeah, so I we... think it would be nice to get his perspective on it. So, yeah, here I go. Shit. So this is a narrative storytelling game. It's not an RPG. But uses this is... dices with symbols on and Dices. And, uh, yeah, this dices. is based on the old Star Wars Edge of the Empire system, all of this stuff. And it's basically got all of these fucking weird dice with symbols on them. And instead of using your imagination and things like this, what you do is you roll the dice, look at those, and that tells the DM what happened and the players they all have this big discussion about what's going on so for example all the characters can die but then you can look at the dice and go actually but what if they didn't die and then they can resurrect for no fucking reason so that's the sort of game that we played <laughs> that's the reputation that it has anyway but is it good 
that's the question that we, we wanted to answer. So we finally gave it a go because a lot of our mates play it and stuff like this. And what did you think, guys? Gary, you're up. <laughs> you were here with Gary McCallum, by the way, yeah, um, host of the Murder Hobo Show. What's up, man? Okay. So, so did you like Genesis? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there, there were times when we were playing it that me and you were staring at each other or I was looking James uncomfortably yeah. in the eyes mm. as we were waiting for the determination of what the dice roll actually meant. It was That was so fucking t- tedious. I don't mean to be rude to Stefan, who was, was running the game. Great game by Steve. Yeah, because he did a really good job of running it and what was going on was really Stephen, good. Stefan, I think, made it entertaining. Yeah, but when it was like, when you go to like hit a monster, right, and you roll the dice, and we've made jokes about this despite having never played it, you roll the dice. And you have to interpret them. Yeah, and it does take fucking forever. There's no two ways about it. Well, we no, are amateurs, though. We, yeah, no, but it does, though, because you're Stephen like, okay, this, this and that and this and that. And it's like, this cancels that out. That cancels this out, so you're left with, oh, nothing. Or but, you're left with, oh, uh, yeah, but that's, well, that's shit. That's exactly what it is. It would be like, okay, you've got two threat, you've got three successes, a couple of advantages, and, uh, oh, yeah, you hit the monster. Nine damage. And it's like, what? <laughs> The one thing that I didn't like about it, too, was the monster damage. So it's static. You, depending on how many extra uh, successes you get, add on to your damage. So if, if my damage is five, it's always five. Yep. And if I get extra successes, then I would do, say, five, six, or seven. Yeah. But there is there. Uh, it's the one thing that you can't take away from Savage Worlds is exploding dice and the fun that that throws into it. So it wounds like, seem fairly static. Yeah, and it meant that like, say for example, I I I hit a monster with my Warhammer, which I had. I always knew I was going to do nine damage, and I knew that these hit these monsters had more than nine damage, nine health health or whatever. So <clears throat> it meant that I was always going to be. It, it was always going to take me more than two rounds to kill these monsters, unless. I got a massive amount of successes, which wasn't going to happen unless I spent an amazing amount of biscuits, which was what we were calling <laughs> yeah, these story like treats. There's these story points that you can spend them, and they go into the GM's pot, and then they spend them, and it's to make things more difficult. They're kind of like Benny's, but difficult. yeah, it's kind of, you can make, make they're kind of like Benny's, but you can sort of make your thing more like easier, or the GM GM's like rolls more difficult. Yeah, or and whatever. the way that works is there's different die types. There's a D12 version of the other thing, which gives a higher probability of good or bad depending on what you're doing, and then you just swap them out of the dice pool that you've got in your hand. I just don't. I don't know. It was a bit over complicated for me. I don't not like. I don't mind complicated games, but when when every like a simple action. Yeah. Well, it was down to okay. Look, he, here's what you need to do. You I mean, there's to... there's aspects of it which I think are, are cool. But I love the just... biscuit system. Yeah, <laughs> but they're it just did. they're just too yeah. much. That was good because like they, it was like you can you can if you want something cool to happen in the story, you can use one of these little story tokens. So it's like at one point I used it so that there were just bear traps outside that because these people were being attacked by the monsters. I thought it would be cool in the story that they'd set up traps so during yeah, the fight. They were scared. Yeah, exactly. So during the fight there were bear traps there and I also used it to just have manacles on me because <laughs> earlier on I bought them and I had a flashback about them. It was mainly me using them to be fair. <laughs> so so the first story point that you used was to get a grenade potion that you threw into the bush. We didn't know it was in there and you managed to kill a pigeon. We didn't actually use the pigeon throughout the whole game. I'm a little upset. Oh yeah. The second one was to create manacles or have manacles. <laughs> the third time was to have a second pair of manacles. The fourth time you used it was to create glowing fungus that you used to uh, direct the insects towards this bartender we had tied to a tree. Uh, the fifth time was the flute, wasn't it, in the forest? Oh, yeah. The, the, the two people were down on the ground, like, dying. So I was just like, yeah, can there just be a wandering, like, bard, minstrel, that just heals these guys? And he was just like, yeah, fuck it. And like, yeah. But I like that. That was actually cool. And that was could, a nice aspect. But you could use that in any game. Doesn't have to be Jenna shit. Yeah, it, it's basically it's a simple it's a simple uh, mechanic. Yeah, you you put down five tokens or whatever, and you want to use one, you flip it and give it to the DM. Yeah. The one thing I didn't like about it was I noticed that like there was the they were flipping the story point and then immediately flipping it back. We didn't quite catch on to that, but it was done twice. Because you could do it so easily. Yeah. Because there was a <clears> point <throat> I wanted to see if that was legal, and there was a point where Stefan uh, no yes I used one. No, Stefan used one because he was like, yeah, I want to make your my role easier and I said and then I just yeah, flipped so it yeah. right back and said yeah I want to make it harder so and then he could have just went oh, I could make it easier and I go I make it harder and we could just keep going for ages and yeah. it would just it would be dumb but the thing is he what happened was he up, then upgraded his dice uh, one of his dice pool for the good thing 
to, to D12 instead of D8. And then when Harrison flipped it back, he then upgraded the difficulty dice to a D12 as well. If this sounds like it doesn't make much sense, it, it, it honestly doesn't even make much more sense even if you're looking at it doing it. Most <laughs> of the time, we, what we did is we had our dice and then we are just like, is that what I roll? Yes, roll it and go, I got this, and then waited for Stefan to count it all up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was it. There was a point where, where we were rolling initiative and I, I just looked at my dice and went, I can't, I don't even... And then I just pu- pushed them towards Stefan and just went, I got these ones. <laughs> that's, like, that's what I'm like when I play poker. It's like, it's so bad. another weird thing too was the initiative system. How you get three point one, three point two? Yeah. So, you but then none of it, one. none of it even matters. So if you roll higher than the monsters, you will go first anyway. So, what the fuck yeah. did all of that matter? No, because the monsters do actually go. If, they, if there's, if there's one, um, say NPC card as he made um, for them, then it just puts them in one slot. But if they've got individual ones like they had, like wild cards and extras from Savage yeah, it just puts you right. around them. But it just meant that anyone could go at any yeah. player yeah. turns. Turn. Yeah, so it should be separated into. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, right. kind of. So get if it. there's if there's four monsters and one one, or sorry, if there's four players and one monster, we all roll initiative. Even the monster rolls initiative, and they're all equal to a certain score, but one of them is equal to the monsters, and that's where they fit into sort of the the turn slot. But it, it doesn't mean if doesn't matter what you roll, you can go first or last because you choose when you want to go. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> well, anyway, I, I thought it was a fun game. I just uh, like a fun. Session. I just didn't necessarily enjoy the mechanics of the game. I don't. It's not for me. If, if, when simple actions take too long, swinging a sword at somebody should be like that. It's not like. Yeah. It, it shouldn't take ages because you're swinging a fucking sword at somebody. I'm sure, right? I'm. I'm sure. If you actually enjoyed it originally, right, and then you actually got to learn in it, it would. You'd. you'd, you'd it would entertain you, and you'd enjoy it. But I mean, it's just. It's yeah. It's a bit overcomplicated. If you could read those dice as quickly as you could read, say, a word written down on a bit of paper, I'm sure it'd be really, really good. But I, I, I think it'd take too long, and it ain't worth it. Because it's, it's even worse with a hangover. I don't. I think even the pros were still taking their taking more time than it should have. Um, do you know the one shit part about it too that I don't like is I'm not into overly complicated mechanical systems. Mm. There's a lot of things on that character sheet that don't need to be on there, and I'm not like how they break everything down into the different subsections, skills, and you got the other things in your character sheets. Mm. And then depending on what slot you've got ranks and stuff in, it's like holy crap, man! Does it does a game really need for for a game that's supposed to be narrative, yeah. which it means it's a storytelling game. There's a lot more time. There's we spent a lot of mechanics. We yeah. spent a lot more time trying to figure out the mechanics than we did actually like telling a story. That but was game game one of the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <so there's- laughs> oh, oh, that was oh, oh Gaza. Oh, what, uh, oh, what, oh, what, oh, wow. what an interview. <laughs> well, shut up though, because um, next up we played Lamentations of the Flame Princess, Nick, and I yeah. think you would really, really, really. Like this, yeah, man. I'll tell you what, it was fucking badass. Yeah. It was GM'd by none other than Matt Stark, Mr. Stark, Frog Dick, Frog you Dick himself. Hear, exactly. You can hear a lot of hammering going on upstairs, guys. But yeah, this is weird role playing. So this is OSR stuff. Mm-hmm. Anyone who knows this will be very familiar with it. The only real differences is that skills are done on a D6. Um, and you have dots in a d6 and all it is is that if you have one dot you have to roll a one two mm-hmm. dots you have to roll a two oh, Similar, yeah, or so. under yeah okay yeah um, so that's pretty much it and uh we the characters are all very weird so so they're, they're, it's like set in our world I think because right. we had to go to France to do, yeah. do our mission oh, yeah, okay. it's, it's yeah, set yeah. In, it's set in the real real ish world yeah and so we had uh, like characters my guy was basically a walking bag of disease you didn't know what gender he was or how old th- they were basically <laughs> yeah. and he he was just a disease bag warlock for example even his healing spell utilized flies yeah and i was like uh, this this grotesque looking kind of almost cave womany sort of yeah, you were a woman. hag yeah and, but i had this weird uh, thing which meant that uh, at inopportune moments um i would either turn gigantic or go just a normal human size and i started off the game it's <laughs> like gigantic and Eric was a slug. <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw yeah. the video. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then the other guy that we were playing with, Todd, he was just a human. Oh, so, so he was the only normal one in the party. Yeah. <laughs> and he role-played it really well. Yeah, he, he kind of... T- uh, he turned up... At, drug with at, you guys. He turned up at our table and then just kind of said... 
you know, what are you doing? Are you about to do a game? And basically, you just joined it. Which is cool. We had more players. And we think, yeah, she did such a great job. Yeah, Rob played it spectacularly because every time we did something and we just started, we were playing our characters because it was like a disease bag, a hag, and a slug. (laughs) And then this guy. And this guy. Yeah, and then the guy was just like, you guys are always getting into trouble, man. And he was just, he was oh hating it. God. Like, not not the character, and not the player, but the character, the character was just yeah, like yeah, hating yeah. it. I love it. it. So funny. Sounds whacked out. But the cool thing about the adventure was we played an adventure called Blood and the Chocolate. And it was basically Willy Wonka, yeah. but really fucked up. And <laughs> oh, so- trust me, it was fucked up. There was, there was, a, there was a point in it when M- Matt said that um, all of the, what they called, the beans... Uh, they were the Oompa Loompas, weren't yeah. they? Yeah, but they, they're not Oompa Loompas. But they had been chocolate beans for heads, and they were called pygmies in there. That's it. Right. But he they, said all the pygmies were having a mass orgy. And, and, oh. and the way it was written in the book is, you walk into all the pygmies fucking. That's how it said it in the book. Yeah, and then we went, I went, I went Matt, are you? did you write this? Or was that, is that actually how it's written? And he goes, yep. And it was That's just like, what it wow. says. But yeah, there was a point where we, uh, somebody, Todd's character, Wilhelm, he ate uh, the blueberries and swelled up to a massive size. And just that we just yeah. started rolling him along. <laughs> and then to try and fit him through doors, we constantly had to like barge him up against the wall to try and yeah, make squeeze him, small, him out. Squeeze Wicked. him out and get all the blueberry out of him. And then all of us got covered in it and we called it blue khaki. And oh, it was like, no. it, was, it was just, it just got really messed Matt's up. Game. Matt brought this to the table. Yeah, oh, yeah. Because Matt, Matt strikes me as quite a reserved guy. Well, this is an, an adventure he bought, but yeah, he... <laughs> the wicked, well He had a great time with yeah. it. Awesome. But the whole adventure was to recover several things, like we had to get chocolate beans, the secret recipe, all of this kind of stuff. And anyway, we got right to the end of the adventure and we found this big chest in the room of the woman that owned the chocolate factory. I love this. And we were like, oh shit, it's here. I lockpicked it, right? I had a yeah. one in six chance to lockpick it yeah. and I fucking did it. Oh, and, and, but... And then as I did it, it Matt's like... Yeah, um, a big thing of sulfuric acid burns the thing. There was obviously a trap to stop anyone oh, uh, getting the recipe. And we were like, are you fucking serious? And he's like, it says it in the adventure. And we were like, oh, come yeah. on, man. But then there were 4,000 gold bars in the thing. So we just yeah. immediately put them in the pockets. James turned massive. We all jumped on his back and he just hopped over the walls and we ran away. <laughs> I walked away. So Matt's, oh, yeah, Matt's yeah. an immense GM. He was so good. And, and he one of the things that kept coming up was that you have an open doors role in this game. <laughs> And then wow. we, but it's like so. Every time I went up to a door, if you just describe you opening a door well enough, you can just do it. Yeah. But the thing is, is that I kept on going. I kicked the door down. He went, "You kicked the door, and you just hurt your foot." And oh, I went, "Okay, no. fine." I go up, I turn the handle, and he's like, "Fine, the door opens." Door opens. So, <laughs> yeah. and so we kept on describing us opening doors like Brilliant. really massively. It was funny. And so levitations really you would play again? Oh, oh, one hundred percent. That's yeah. why I bought it because I knew you guys would love it. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. The characters alone make it. It doesn't Sounds matter what type of game you would be playing. If it's just putting them and people well. into it, but yeah, you would absolutely love it, Nick. Wicked. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be playing that soon. Next up, we played a game of ICRPG in the evening. Um, <laughs> basically, uh, Gary McCallum, who's the host of the Murder Hobo show, um, he he, he also hosts another show called uh, Threats, Treats and Timers which is all about ICRPG and of course we wanted the opportunity to play ICRPG with yeah. him he brought all of his stuff with him had no games planned and so we bullied him into playing ICRPG yeah, uh, running ICRPG for he us he didn't want to play uh, he didn't want to play it but he brought his stuff just <laughs> in case, case. Good and we were like on the uh, Thursday evening and we were just like Gary come on you've got your stuff just bring it out yeah. so after yeah. we all ate pizza and we were all feeling a bit tired we bullied him into, into running it and then literally after one encounter we all got so excited we all started taking selfies at the table and then and then all of us were just like so distracted and then I said to James I was like James right lay across the table I want to take a picture of you laying across the table <laughs> yeah, so. and then um, and then he did it and then Gary got fed up and went to bed Aww. so he played one Aww. encounter of ICRPG what and then he pulled the plug yeah. yeah, we all actually sat there and rolled up all of our characters first as well. Now apologise to Gary. And I said to him, sorry, <laughs> sorry Gary. Gary. <laughs> and I said to him afterwards, I was like, Gary, why did you pull the plug? And he went, table surfing Asians. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> what was I supposed to do? <laughs> yeah, fair enough. But the very next morning, we woke up, and if, if those of you know the old comics, or I'm more familiar with the uh, the arcade game, but Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah. So this is a po- post-apocalyptic game where, where uh, I guess, dinosaurs have taken over the world. I only know the arcade game, so I don't really know the background of it that much. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you play dudes with guns, 
uh, and scientists and things like this fighting dinosaurs in Cadillac. Uh, yeah. yeah, and because it's uh, all, all the old fifties technology. Yes. I guess you, sign you, me up. You, yeah. so I think I think what it was is that basically another meteor strike happened, but then there was a few human survivors, but dinosaurs came back. Different timeline. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. As far yeah. as I know, I can't really remember it, uh, like the, the backstory that much. But what Sounds I do fun. know yeah. was Cadillacs and dinosaurs. Yeah. So it was fucking cool. But we played a new system called Adventurers. Now. It was really fun, because this is basically a four-page RPG. Two pages for the players, two pages for the GM. Right. And yeah. uh, you... Simple. It's really, yeah. really simple. And you essentially roll... Was it 2d6? Yeah, you can roll 2d6 up to a maximum of three, depending on uh, your skill set. Your skills. And then you, yeah, you have skills, that, and you have advanced skills or basic skills, mm-hmm. and then and then you just roll, add whatever stat... Really, really simple game, Easy. and it's and it can be used for any genre. And Stefan, he decided to try out a new game and oh, use Mr. it Dragon's for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wicked. So this is uh, Stefan Dragonspawn uh, of the Dragon's Toolbox blog, and he, yeah, he decided to to, to use this new system for this, and the story was fantastic. Mm. So it, it was t- fun as shit. Man. It was, uh, and the miniatures that he used, and 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 the map and stuff, oh, he yeah. used like a dry dry marker eraser, so ah, he could draw stuff sweet. on the grid yeah, that he got. Yeah, that's cool. That was that was I loved the. Yeah, and he had all these cars and all these dinosaurs, and it did devolve to, into some points in us playing with the cars and the dinosaurs. Yeah, because they were the ones oh, that you, had, you yeah. pull them back, and then it would go forwards on its own. And it was yeah. just like, yee! Too fun. So yeah. the story of the game was that, that this um, guy had gone missing, mm-hmm. and we, he was the scientist. He, he was, was my mentor. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. And we had to track him through the jungle, fight some dinosaurs, track him down. But it turns out the guy had been part of this project to. Um, get the dinosaurs to take over the world <laughs> yeah and he put, implanted uh, sort of these things in the dinosaurs heads to yeah, try like and mind control things. them okay sweet. yeah and, yeah, yeah. and w- it was really really fun and uh, it ended with a really cool thing with they, these guys were trying to sneak into the uh, into the lab and meanwhile my character was in uh, was a pilot right well a wannabe pilot because in this universe uh, no planes or helicopters exist anymore okay cool yeah. and so I'd been secretly designing a plane sweet. so I took Stefan off to one side and said it says on my character sheet I have a secret plane hidden somewhere <laughs> Where. Can I uh, can I go and get it? Yeah. So while these guys were sneaking in, I I came back um, like with, with this dog and this child that we found, and I flew in. They just about got in, and I, I was yeah. I was we really... were being all stealth about it, and like you know, really being like, oh yeah, I do this. I'm gonna move here. Through, yeah, yeah. And then he just goes. I appear on, on this on this pedal cycle. Yeah, it was like a really really. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those really shit planes. I had I had um, aerodynamics one hundred and one in one hand, was trying to steer the plane with the other hand. <laughs> yeah. and just crashed it into the roof, killing three of the guards. Nah, oh, there you go. Yeah, right. and then and then we we sort of all got in down to the lower levels, started fighting everyone. I got in a car, smashed it into the scientists, smashed it into the uh, into oh, the man. computer. Everyone was killing each other left, right, and centre. Really, What's really combat cool like? landing. It's it's okay. Um, mm-hmm. You you it's very basic. So you roll attack. They roll defend. Uh, if you hit, you, then you do damage, and the mm-hmm. damage yeah. is always set. Okay. So you have you have a gun. It does seven damage. You do seven. Damage. Always do seven. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty decent. Then. Yeah. So it's quite simple in that. And then it's like if you if you're uh, advanced, if you've got an A next to it, then yeah. that's when you roll the three dice. As you get more, and then yeah. you take the highest result out of two. Okay, yeah. sweet. So it's it's a really really simple game, yeah. and you always have to. The difficulty is you always have to hit a seven, and then there are modifiers depending on what's going on, kind gotcha. of similar to yeah. Savage. Gotcha. Um, so it's it's a very simple setting, a uh, very simple game, I should say. Mm. And yeah, I think we should give it a try sometime. Definitely sounds fun. Uh, what was it called again? Sorry, oh, Cadillac. Oh no, what's the system called? The Adventurers. Adventurers, Adventurers yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and next up, I played Dungeon Crawl Classics: The Chained Coffin. Now we've spoken about Dungeon Crawl Classics a lot on this uh, podcast, and obviously. Um, it's an OSR game, crazy, a lot of randomness involved. But um, obviously, I played it with two first timers, with Gary ah, and Eric. Right. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got another interview for you guys. So let's go. Ooh. Because this adventure, basically, we talked about it a little bit on our podcast before. It's all about getting this guy who's in a coffin. He's a priest that's been put there against his will because his old mate, who used to be a priest, is now on the side of chaos. And he now wants to get all these powers, become a big chaos lord. And this guy who's been imprisoned in a in a fucking coffin wants to stop him. And he beseeches the help of all of these fucking adventurers, which is the party, and gets them to stop him. And they need to tr- trudge around these mountains and find... I know, we just played it. Yeah, so well, you, well, you, well, you played it, but the audience didn't play it, you motherfucker. Well, fuck them. So, uh, this is basically the adventure, but you played DCC, it's crazy, it's an OSR game, it's got loads of weird dice. What did you guys think of it? Gary, we'll start with you. I think you guys are very pretty. Oh, thanks. Talk about the game, Gary. Oh, sorry. 
We're alone in a hotel room right now, just, just saying. Yeah, but us three are alone in a hotel room <laughs> uh, every the night. The game itself could have used story points, and it could have used some friend <laughs> advantage. <laughs> okay, so let me, let me just say this, right? Throughout the fucking game, Gary kept trying to use a mechanic from Genesis, a game that he fucking hates, and kept on, he kept on flipping over this dumbass token that he had. And he'd go, I want to use the story points of a flashback so I know this mountain off by heart. And, uh, yeah, so... so it would have made the story more interesting, wouldn't it? Not at all. Okay. No, it would have made it more fucking annoying because you would have just meted the whole fucking game. That's what you were trying to do. You were just like, so I know this mountain like the back of my hand because I came here when I was nine years old. That's your voice, by the way. Thank you. I appreciate that. It kind of a little bit resembled. Do you me. want to just try to talk about the game? Just try so, and do one thing. He's, he's okay. drunk. What do you want? Yeah, I know. I'm trying. He's been drinking whiskey all day. <laughs> just for what Christ. Are we talking about? DCC, you stupid prick. Sorry, I got so lost can't. in your eyes, Harrison. I can't stand this. <laughs> this is this is going to be really unlistenable. Right. Talk DCC, about the game. DCC, top notch. It was very fun. Loved it. <clears throat> you want me to compare it to something else? Compare it to Genesis? No, just, just talk say, about say it. Say what you liked what about your feelings? it. What, what, did what did you, you like? What did you dislike about it? Bitch. Um, well, wow. Why are you going to be so mean to me? Because you're infuriating. Hmm. Lee Hansen. So I really like the story point idea behind the whole game. That was pretty. Okay, I'm gonna fucking move on. Eric, <laughs> Eric, Eric, how about you, Give man? Give us some fucking gold, please. So Eric, you you you're an old guy. You're very old, <laughs> yes. right? So you you played the old school games, and this is an OSR game. What did you think of this? What did you like? What did you dislike? Oh, the art reminded me of yeah the old modules I used to play. I like the the handouts. I mm -hmm. like that. I like uh, yeah the feel. It's an old school feel. Uh, systems easy. You just just roll a dice, move along. Uh, the only thing, you know, it's like last year I bought those nice DCC dice and I didn't get to use any of them. So, so yeah. I want my fucking money back. So what Eric is talking about here is that in this adventure, it was a pretty cool one because it had loads of handouts that you get to give to the players. So when you see the big monsters, you go into certain areas of the dungeons, things like this, you have like printouts and things that you get to show the players um, but Eric also played a thief and a lot of classes get to use things like the D7 the D 16 uh, the, the 22 the D 17.5 all of this stuff but Eric played the thief and he didn't get to use any of the funky dice that he bought what a shit game <laughs> Gary you've said Sorry, that about man. everything you've played at this con <laughs> even ICRPG that you ran yeah, you what a shit game yeah, yeah you ran me. you ran one one room of that dungeon uh, that you played and in ICRPG uh, oh then what happened yeah you pushed it out and went to bed that's right well no you, you left all your shit out there and we had to pick up after that's you that's what I got you guys here for uh, really what happened is I got fucking drunk and somebody started table surfing I was busy looking at James Butt <laughs> we on, on this podcast we try to champion DCC as much as we can and all I wanted to do was get you guys in here and say some nice stuff about the game and you've just talked a bunch of shit so fuck the boat I tell you I, okay if you want me to say some nice things about the game I will say this it was way fucking funner than Genesis you know what the weird part is? I don't know how to play. I don't know how to play DCC, and I don't really know how to play Genesis. But when I sat down at that fucking Genesis table compared to this table, I actually had a kind of feeling like I knew what I was doing. Right. Okay. Okay. That's something. <laughs> this is coming from Gary, who's fucking like just wow. from, just a one system guy now. Right. Well, what I liked about uh, there was it, no tricks. Yeah. What I liked about explaining the DCC to two people was um, when you start off, you say, "Hey, you know how to play D and D, right? Well, it's like this, but here's the few differences, mm. and that's it." And I, I like that, and it was really fun just explaining it to people, and then the, the slight few mechanics, although nobody burned any luck or anything, but nonetheless, yeah, I, I enjoyed playing right. with you guys. Well, I was oh. kind of curious to know why or what advantage I was getting from you putting your wiener in my mouth. Look, that part of it, <laughs> that was when we were on a break, Gary. Yeah, that was secret oh, shut up. Man. We told you not to mention that. I thought oh. I was going to get an extra D6 out of the no, deal. I mean, well, yeah. where I'm coming extra from D. is, yeah, like I you said, uh, extra D. I, I, I've been gaming for a long time, and so the, the old school stuff, for me... <laughs> Gary's just laughing now. Like the, 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 Eric, tried to explain it, the, please. The, the, did you fart? No, no. I, got, I didn't get an extra D6, I just got extra D. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Eric, please. So yeah, it, it feels feels very old school, but like with with more fun spin, like the Sweet. like the little fumble things and the crits, and I mean it's a little bit not it's not very intuitive in some ways for some things that you. You go across and you look that and you add that and I will, but, yeah, I'd agree with you there. So sometimes the character sheets can be um, 
difficult to read for new players, I think, yeah. as well. And I, I've experienced that even for older players. Like, I've been playing it for ages with fucking Nick, and he never knows how to read. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. For, for, Plus, you told me that mine, the thief, is one of the easiest ones, so I must be pretty dumb. You're pretty retarded. <laughs> yes. No, no, it's, it, I, I, I don't even think it's that. I, I genuinely believe that, like, that game, sometimes the character sheets, are, they're laid out in a way that's as intuitive as possible. But there's a few stats. They've they've gotten rid of things like skills and stuff like that. But it's still just there's the slight amount of crunch that just makes it that little bit more difficult for new players. Yeah, it just it's a feels shame. like uh, depending on the class you play, it, it's like the rules are different for each. That class. that is my one problem with the game, and I I, like I it's I, not I, streamlined that if you play once with one class, you play another one. It's kind of the same. You no, know, we'll one thing out. Is that uh, we haven't done this before in one shot? Is that we started at level five, and in our gaming sessions, we've only just played that. We've only just got to that, and we've done DCC for a while in other areas. Yeah. So usually, when it's new players, it's level zero, it's a funnel, or level one. Yeah. So you see, the thing is, with new players, you st- you start at level zero, and you have a very basic character sheet. Then when you level up to level one, you get you get your abilities, and as a result, you know how to read the character sheet because oh, it, it's just a very yeah. very minor like changes. You, you learn as you advance. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So that's why it feels that way. Um, for most new players, uh, starting at level five wouldn't be the norm. But I wanted to give you guys something that was slightly more survivable because yeah, usually level at level one, fucking big. One final thing I wanted to say was I remember when I first started playing DCC. Eric, you were saying that you were... Uh, I, I was telling you about it, and you were like, no, I'm fucking done with Rollmaster, man. I'm done with all those fucking <laughs> yeah, tables. tables. But well, it, I went, like, maybe eight pages into the book, and there was, like, 12 tables already, so I'm like, But it no. doesn't It doesn't actually <laughs> hamper the gameplay at all. You don't use them that often. Right, but it's not fun to read, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's no, why it, I quit it, reading it. I, I, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. <laughs> so when you go to a restaurant and order off the menu, do you get, like, the first page? You're like, this looks like a table, and then you just put it down? Yeah, and he's just like, "Give me a sandwich." That's right. I'm gonna a soup. <laughs> That's just like you go to Wendy's and you go to order, and yeah, you the see girl that. just leaves. Then yeah. no, I'm not gonna eat. <laughs> you just look at the combo menu. You're like, "This is bullshit." <laughs> if if Eric had his way, restaurants would serve <clears throat> water and bread. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Maybe well, thanks, I guys. Wait, I've got a question. I just at the end, would you one play DCC again? And two, recommend it to a friend. Oh, absolutely. I had a blast, man. You're a fantastic dungeon master, Harrison. Yeah, yeah, That was so much fun, dude. NPCs, they were Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. We were literally waiting for upset tub of jelly. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Then it happened, and it was like a milestone in my life. It was a a bucket list moment. I was wondering if anyone ever actually noticed me saying that. (laughs) Every session, even in our weekly games. Yeah. Mm. Upset tub of jelly. I'm like, there it is. <laughs> Mission complete. My 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 money was well paid for coming here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I I I'd play it again, and uh, mm-hmm. people should play it too if they like old school or just fantasy and it definitely had crazy an old stuff. Feel to it, yeah, man. I really like that. Just play that. Roll your D20. Figure too. out your got, stuff. Got what the big nobody book cares what here. you got. Big ass book for twenty five dollars. Wow. Yeah, you you have four hundred and fifty pages. Yeah, you, it's so worth the money. So yeah, everyone check it out and uh, table. Yeah, table. Yeah. Where's shut, the center pole? Table. Look, shut the, the fuck up. Right That's the spells. All the spells have table. a table, but it's okay. Why are they in a table? Okay, table. we're gonna go. All right, bye, everyone. Look, shut up. Fuck, shut the fuck up. See? Shut the fuck up. Table all right, yep. Yeah, see you later. Fuck, index, shut the fuck up. And that's that interview. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but next up, we played Ghost Town Grannies. Nick. Of course you did. Uh, okay, so this was one that I signed us up for because oh. it was it was an hour and a half. <laughs> it was just before Eric's Wise Guys set. Yeah. Oh, and then no. like obviously, goes. and this was one that was on the website roster, so it wasn't a Nerds International exclusive game. Let right. me just say something. I want to preface this with, if they, they had this system on this fucking convention where if, if you wanted to get coins to spend at vendors, right, called, called like con, cob coins, yeah. right, you you had to run a game, and I right. think I think I knew what this guy was up to. He right? cop coins because <laughs> this was hands down the worst game I've ever played yeah. in my life. Oh, ever, ever, ever. even wow. yeah. ever. even Gary yeah. was part of okay, it. Okay, so Savage well. Worlds has rules, yeah. and this guy, as soon as we sat down, he said t- he said two things. First of all, he said he, he, this. I'm going to do an impression of how he spoke because 
because I'm gonna. But he goes, he, he was like, so you guys are playing grannies in this game, okay? <laughs> and, and of course, grannies say a lot of racist things. And you guys are gonna say racist stuff. And all this time, he kept on glancing over at James, because <laughs> obviously, James is Asian. And he was like, so if you say a lot of racist stuff, you know, that's okay. It ain't racist. People always say to me, you're racist, man. I ain't racist. It's the grannies. Yeah, the he grannies says, did it, man. He says that he's. He's recorded a few of his sessions, but they can never be released because they're very un PC. And then he and then he also says like he, he goes, <laughs> you know, I'm not a, the type of guy that cares for rules, man. I just, you know, if if we're gonna go rules light on this one, rules light. It was non rules. <laughs> not yeah. only that, right? There was a, there was a brand new person which which Harrison and I met the very uh, night before. Yeah. Who this was his first. Bless him. This is his first taste of Savage Worlds. And oh, the guy so savage, so under it all, it was Savage, right? Yeah, yeah and right, he yeah. didn't use a single rule. The only wow. rule he used was Cards for Initiative, and even that That's he it. fucked up. Yeah. Because there was a point, right? Okay, so let's get into the plot. The plot was this. A bunch of grannies break down... On a bus. On a bus, and they have to go and find gas. And yep. for some reason, this redneck in, 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 in the game tells us... Um, okay, you have to go and find gas in this mine. Yeah. So we, we uh, all the grannies miss here. So the grannies have to, yeah. Yeah, so so we have to go and find gas in a mine for no fucking reason. That's where we the we thought it was at. a sandwich shop, and then we go up to the mine. Okay, so so while we're there, the first combat happens, Nick, right? Yeah. And Gary says, okay, I want to go on hold. So he turns his car to the side, yeah. and he says, I want to interrupt the guy. Mm-hmm. And he, he rolls to interrupt, and then the guy just says, you hit, you kill the chicken. That's not how it works at all. Secondly, every <laughs> single roll you did, Nick, yeah. would, would, would succeed. It didn't matter what you rolled. Harrison rolled a critical failure, and this is what happened. I killed the guy in one hit, vaporising his head. Didn't so even roll damage. Harrison had... Ah. This, they had had this soup uh, this uh, edge. What was it called? It was it was called like Wicked mighty smash. Mighty or something smash. Like. <laughs> yeah. So so Harrison went to slap the guy, Crit rolled fire. a critical failure, still killed him, and apparently his head got completely smushed against the wall and and uh, vaporized. And the only bad thing that happened was the hand broke. Yeah, and then Gary, at one point, he rolled just an action to interrupt to be able to take an action. Yeah. Killed a chicken, smacking it into a steel, where the steel exploded, killing every bad guy into a room. He hadn't even rolled to attack. He just rolled to interrupt the wow. guy's action. And if yeah. combat over. And then combat over. <laughs> the guy, everything you did would succeed. Oh, and everything no. he did would fail. There was a point where he, he said... Um, he rolled a four to try and shoot somebody, and then he goes, "I know that's not enough to hit you guys." And we're like, "No, ranged attacks. You need. Four. You only need a four to yeah. hit somebody." And he just goes, he just pauses, and then goes, "Okay, the next guy tries to shoot." And it was like, "What? You just ignored what we said. We told you to goddamn rules, and you just ignored. Yeah. It. You just got it. Roll we the don't think there he expected um, Savage Worlds people to turn up." Yeah, not only that, but he said he'd listened to The Wild Die before. So and that's, he, his, that's, that's his, why that's his training. Podcast. That's yeah. his training. And he so he's never he picked did, up the book, hoping know. that the non-savage turn, the savages turn up. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it, that's what I think he picked an obscure rule system so that he could just fudge his way through a story that he wanted to tell. And then he goes, he also said, uh, I've converted all of these rules from, from the grandma world rules. And then he uh, he just, all he, he didn't convert shit. He just had the fucking spells and he'd written them on the back of a world a Savage Worlds character sheet not to mention there were bits where he he, he, he he was like supposedly looking down at a character sheet on his phone and Gary saw that he was just looking at the home screen on his fucking phone it was, he picture would, of a cat he would look down and he was like yeah that hits oh I was like he was doing so he was, did he have he, a screen did he have no. a GM screen no. he, was, he was trying to log into the uh, days in Wi-Fi Oh yeah. yeah, this big enemy right well, I was sitting here. right next to him. It's I could the, see him. The Wi-Fi beast. Um, <laughs> no, I didn't hit him. I tell you what, right? There was one moment when, right? So he brought a load of Jenga blocks to use uh, uh, to Why? As, as walls, yeah, to depict walls. Okay, and, and to that was actually route. pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah. But it was cool, yeah. But he just—they were all in one straight line, so he didn't even fucking corridor. need to. And they never—he oh, yeah, never changed them. But not only that, right? So we were, were meant to be going through this cave, and then he was just like to speed it up because we had to dart off to get to the wise guys game yeah um, and he knew like you know we're on a tight schedule and then he was just like okay so I'll move it forwards and he goes basically you get into the uh, uh, <laughs> the bowels, the, the of, bowels the cave. of the cave right? right? and he spent ages trying to get his image up right and we're just like what the fuck man why is this integral and he literally on his phone got opened up an endos- endoscope image like, no like a colonoscopy yeah 
of the inside of an actual anus. Oh, lovely. And, and then he just, like, just showed oh. it to us and he's like, <laughs> that's what, he's like, that's what you see, man. <laughs> this is the this is the bells of the cave. And all of us, we were just like, I just said to him, I feel genuinely uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, why have Where's you Where's your X card when you need it, you know? Yeah, and, and, and then, like, like, there was another guy at the table who had this confusion like thing right so his character would be confused for one of these six rounds okay. every time we entered any scene and think how long that is in a Savage Worlds oh, game so no. the only notable thing his character did throughout the whole game was he attacked an enemy that was already dead <laughs> and he yeah. went oh I remember my the trouble is game. he was brand new to it he was given no guidance by the GM oh, we no. were giving so him as much away, guidance as possible and they'd be like what's Savage like and he'd be yeah. like no this is what happened right at the very end Harrison had to run off because he actually had a a, a, a proper uh, slot in Wise Guys and right. I, I just managed to slip in but okay. um, so as as Harrison ran off me and Gary took this guy aside and we're like please 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 give Savage World another go because that was not how it's done at all That's there's not one piece of it that was yeah, done right yeah, yeah. and it's a great system please give it another go oh no so, would you make it out, Nick? Ghost Town Grannies, man. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Was there any ghosts? No, no, no it was because it was in a ghost, like an empty town. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. With a with a petrol station in a mine. Yeah. Yeah, okay, no. Nah. No. Nah. Mm. And then one thing as well is he kept trying to get us to make racist jokes about a Mexican bus driver, but none yeah. of us were taking the bait. Oh, well, you, you don't... You... And, and he actually used the word, and I'm going to say, I know this is terrible, listeners, but he kept, he kept saying Mick, which I think is an Irish racist That's a uh, slur for a, uh, an Irish American. Yeah, because I, I was playing Mick. an yeah. Irish character, and he kept saying, because you're a dirty Mick, man. And I was like, what the fuck So he's a raving racist and uses yeah, and uh, he kept saying, role play to masquerade the fact. Yeah, and he kept on saying beaner as well, and I was like, beaner? I know that's What's not... That? It's, it's a racist term for Mexicans yeah. I know we oh, don't really say it here but like he kept saying it he kept saying it and I was like what the fuck man he literally go the do Chinese food one man come on man <laughs> <laughs> it's, it was just like you've got that to understand horrible. that that stuff is unacceptable yeah. even if you find it funny and even if you could do it among your mates but don't Christ. roll it out at a con with a bunch of people from across the world yeah what's wrong with you you know like, how up stiff upper lip we are especially no, 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 no. especially considering that we're from England like it, they, if you're going to make racist jokes about Irish people there is going to be a high chance that we know or, or, of Irish. or have Irish in us yeah because right. yeah. it's not that far away from us 90% of people from England go oh yeah I'm half Irish yeah, well my right? granddad's Irish yeah exactly my surname's <laughs> Irish you know, my surname's actually Irish so. yeah well, there you go oh, oh my God, goodness God, yeah what my mum's name McKinney <laughs> he's a dumb mick <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. no. and he kept on saying lines for us as well like no, oh god it no, was bad it no, was really no. bad he just needs a private improv game with his friends yeah and just to <laughs> go away go away okay that was a shame but next up we went to the best game we've ever played oh, oh yes <laughs> it was the so best Nick, game of the convention you I, saw you saw the pictures so I it. saw the pictures of this and literally spent a good five to ten minutes zooming in with my jaw open I think the explosion fluff did it for me that tipped me over the edge so what are we talking about Nick we're, we're talking about wise guys aren't we yeah oh my goodness Eric. is that all Eric Eric's a fucking hero mate so yeah. I know he's been getting on the craft recently is that what he's been six up to? months of yeah. effort six months of crafting Boy. for it this game so, so professional six, it was unreal yeah six months that's just making, making the props shit, yeah. that's it so, not to mention writing a whole setting yeah because yeah. he demoed this setting last year at the con that's right yes under, when, under a different name it looked incredible so for those that don't know no, the, the Wise Guys is a gangsters setting for Savage Worlds and Eric um, he ran us through a, uh, a, a sort of scenario called The Hills Have Knives <laughs> and um, this was really good because um, what good. he did is he made these um, terrains and set and scenarios and things like this which which were like all physical terrains mm. which we they were breathtakingly beautiful they mm. were and the so, so we had one that was like a sort of a desert highway in, in, in uh, Nevada that had a diner on it. That's it, yeah. And uh, there was another that was an outback area. But but essentially the plot was this. We're in a diner and uh, these two cops come in and they've got one of our boys, a made man called Remo. Mm -hmm. And Remo is, is like, he's been all beaten up and he was supposed to be at this deal um, with one of our bosses. And it appears to have gone wrong because he's been snatched by the cops. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is, is we need to get him away from the cops and figure out what happened. Yeah, yeah. we also don't want him to be a potential snitch. Yeah, of course, yeah. So we get him away from the cops and we find out that l our boss, Looney John, has been, hey. has been snatched. And along with all the money that was for the deal. Right. So we now need to track Looney John down, get the money. Yeah. And but not only that, he gave us this whacked out story that we couldn't believe. 
Yeah, because yeah. he, he was saying that he was saying that he got snatched by people with nets and tridents and things oh, like this. Yeah, sake. and then he got shot with um, fucking uh, harpoons. harpoons and shit, and we was just like it's fucking Atlanteans coming. Yeah, and yeah, just like you mad. My character Winston, he didn't believe him at all. Who my character is a black Elvis person who's played before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Winston was going up to him, being just like, "You freed me a load of crap, man." <laughs> and obviously, you don't speak that way to a made man. Of so course, then Remo yeah. stands up and he's like, "You talking to me? Kiss my shoe." Kiss my shoulder. And this bitch. is so. This this as soon as that happened, right? Go. Larping uh, initiated oh, in in the game. Yeah. Eric stood up, and I've got photos of it. He was pointing at his at his shoe, going, nice. "Kiss my shoe, man!" Nice. Yeah, and Eric put put his foot up onto a seat and went, "Kiss the shoe, <laughs> kiss the shoe." And then I stood up and was like, "I ain't kissing the shoe. Don't make me do it, man." No, man, no, no, don't, don't, show, don't. Man. And then just as I was about to pull my gun, like I was doing it in real life, yeah. And, uh, Tommy, who's who's another made man, who's essentially our kind of boss, yeah, just, being she, played was, by was a lady. Just like, she she was just like, calm down, calm down, and Eric was like, nah, I'm joking, man. And like, <laughs> it was so so tense, and oh, it just that it's that like moment, the um, it's like the old uh, Goodfellas scene, yeah, with Goodfellas. the shine box, yeah, perfect. It was exactly like that, yeah. But afterwards, we tracked, uh, we tracked, we sort of believed this story, went out to the desert where all of this supposedly yeah. happened, mm-hmm. and we found this like hillbilly outpost oh, where we no. we sort of found where all of this had happened we entered we got ambushed we got ambushed oh, and the things we got ambushed by so this is what happened essentially this guy came out of his uh, his house holding a stick of dynamite with two cougars on a leash yeah and then somebody <laughs> popped out of a trunk with an uzi somebody ca- was on a water tower with a gun yeah then yeah. then a monster truck came out of, uh, <laughs> and and then we had uh, like it was just everything it was like the whole Brilliant. everything in the kitchen sink yeah. the battle starts I fire at the guy with the dynamite shoot him right in the dynamite that's when the explosion oh, that, well, that, that was yeah, yeah that was so the that, second explosion that cut brilliant yeah so the explosion <clears throat> that you saw on the picture that was from the dynamite I blew up all the cougars and then this huge fight happened on this uh, terrain Jay's character who's this big big goofball like like fighting guy with the big Uncle Jay fists Raz. Yeah. Uncle yeah. Jay Raz what a legend he jumped over the fence started punching uh, this granny uh, this old granny who had a shotgun <laughs> and yeah. he's just like what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch, punch this guy and he just starts punching her but the <laughs> really cool thing was on the way to the place we were all doing interludes like proper yes. Tarantino yes. style right and it was like a Tarantino Wicked. movie because we're sharing stories. And this guy who was playing, I can't remember the character's name, but he starts sharing this story. And everyone paused because it was the most unbelievable emotional story. And he's like, He smashed it, man. Oh, he, really? absolutely he absolutely smashed, absolutely it. smashed it. Eric gave him two pennies in wow. the end. Wow. Yeah, because the story was amazing. It, yeah. was, it was basically, he was, he was like, uh, Yeah, my dad, he used to take me to ball games. And uh, one day uh, he, says, he says to me, uh, Son, if you ain't winning, you're losing. And I lost. And I lost. And, and then that's he when lost. he left the house. Yeah, and it turns out he lost all the money. And he's like, and that was the last time I saw my father. Oh, shit. Yeah, and so then he, he used Wicked. that to help Wicked. him in what he was doing. To oh, be like, man. And I knew that, you know, right now in this present moment, like, I need to fight to yeah, win. Yeah, yeah, and you got you see his motivation. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, was, it was fucking oh, awesome. Oh, man. man. Nice. It was just the most emotional thing ever. And, like, meanwhile, Winston's sharing a story about how he snatched a wallet and it got stuck to his arse. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh man, it was good. It was so good, and uh, it was one of the most epic games. The 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 very very last thing that happened was the um, we found the money. Uh, I tried to steal it. As soon as I I found it, I snatched the the briefcase. I pointed the gun, and I was, I was like, "I'm sorry, but I gotta take this. I got kids back east. I know I don't talk to them much, but <laughs> don't matter. Maybe, maybe now I can change that." And then I started legging it. Yeah. I went back to the monster truck and tried to drive it out. Yes. Like James's character and Jay Raz's character jumped on the back of the monster truck, shot me in the back of the head, and then, oh, and then no. went, yeah. went off with the money. So, boys, what are you saying? This could be a shortlister for a Triple T award, then? That good? I think this will go on the Triple T awards. It's getting nominated for Game of the Year, definitely. Wow. Yeah. I know it's not out yet. But that's how good Wise Guys is. Wow. But saying it's not out yet, there is a free demo kit available on Drive Through RPG. Go look at it now. Go check it out. So did the heat mechanic come into it? It didn't in this game. Okay. Um, because we were, it was a one we were, shot. It was mainly because we were out in the backwoods. Oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah, it, it so didn't it really come off, up. off the radar. Yeah, okay. yeah, It would have probably if we played the next scene because we sure. had killed some cops. 
Yeah. But man, that that kit. How did Eric get all that shit down to that hotel? Um, his it just fit in the car. I bet he picked us up uh, in from the hotel we were at. And yeah. It, I tell you what, he packed it fucking well, man. But he had stacks and stacks was, and stacks of stuff. Really? It was like madness. It was basically like if your wife's going on holiday, and she's oh, got eight, wow. eight, eight yeah. suitcases. I bet he was like a happy little kid for packing the truck up. You know, the great thing about this game was it's a one shot, and I would put it up there with the campaigns that I've played. Wow. That's how good it, it was. was. That, in that short amount of time, yeah. it yeah. was that good. It, it was, was so exhilarating. Campaign. Yeah, oh, it, was, it was off the hook. It was like being Did you feel part like gangsters? Movie. Did you yeah. feel like gangsters? Oh, yeah. yeah. I just I just felt almost starstruck, do you know what I mean? Although Eric's like a mate, a slash yeah, colleague. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It was like... But he's also a demigod. Yeah. So that's Playing that was just... It. it was just, I'm so pleased unfortunately someone can turn up but I'm so happy that I got the yeah, spot yeah no totally well I, I mean I was, I was luckily enough to, lucky enough to obviously play test this um, for yeah, quite man. a long time and oh my god what fun it was but, but um, Genesis I played more I, yeah I played one more game right yeah because this was whilst I was playing Fiasco if ahead. you okay. heard the interview earlier which you lo- most likely did right obviously I was lukewarm on it I, di- I wasn't a fan of it now the funny thing about this is, is that I, I kept on hearing, like, everyone was saying, give it another go, mm. give it another go, mm-hmm. because Jamie loves it, um, loads of people on the Nerds International um, uh, network, and they love it. players, so there must be a reason for that. There must be a reason, like there yeah. must be a reason, unless they're idiots, right, <laughs> which is highly likely, <laughs> yeah. but um, they said give it another go. Yeah. And I was supposed to be running Shadowrun on the Friday night, and instead I, as it, they said, right, don't run it, let's allow it, let's run a bit of, of Genesis, right, mm-hmm. and and uh, play one with Tony Fanning GMing because then you'll understand. And okay. I went, all right, fine. I was drunk as a fart, but I gave it a go. <laughs> yeah. And we played Genesis Deep Madness, Deep a Madness. horror game uh, uh-huh. reminiscent of uh, Alien, but if Alien was kind of because Genesis f- is generic, right? You can it, use it with anything. You can use it with anything, right? Gotcha. So uh, we played Genesis with Alien Twist, uh, Alien Twist to it, and it had like a Cthulhu twist to okay, Alien kind cool. of thing. Yeah, yeah. So what was really cool about this is I finally, finally got the dice mechanics. Yeah. I finally got that you have to narrate everything you do, mm-hmm. and what this does, the dice mechanics, when you when you sort of roll you build up your pool of dice you roll it then you have to n- kind of narrate what you do it slows down combat right. but what it does is it makes every action meaningful yeah yeah, yeah. it paints kind of- a massive picture and helps you that like, makes it more theatrical and stuff Cold. yeah so Not a bad it, thing. It, yeah. What, what it is is that is that like I found that I, I ended up liking it a lot more because every action you do be it prying a door open be it hitting somebody it becomes like a camera shot it becomes like something out of a movie and it's like it's like it's almost like fiasco like a storytelling yeah, game yeah, yeah. where your your actions they're not just I hit the guy mm. it's um, suddenly becomes something like uh, I run forward I remember this thing from earlier and I smack it or whatever. as I do yeah, yeah so I'll for example you. like I um, there was a point where I got to advantage but no success right so what happened was is that I was able to I hit the monster, but I didn't damage it in any way. But I flipped it, and as I flipped it, I, I just I narrated to the GM. I said, "Oh, but I noticed its uh, soft underbelly." As yeah. I do so, ah, nice. And then I, yeah, yeah. I quickly pointed out to Jamie, who was my old um, mate from back in Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah. And I said, "So oh, they yeah. get an extra dice to their dice pool because of that." Right. Yeah. So, okay. so then I quickly chucked him a blue dice, which he can use on his next Wicked. roll. So that means he, he then when he swings next time, he, he he's it was his turn. He picks up the next card and goes, "Right, can I go next?" Picks the card and goes. Yeah, oh, he's, he's like, cheers, Franklin, boom, and smacks it in his soft underbelly. That's pretty cool. So, so it's so far removed from what you're used to, it's a little, it takes a little bit of time to kind of get your hang, not the hang off, but get your head around, but once you do... And now I, re- yeah, and then and I it, started to really like it. it so good. then I was flipping story coins, adding yeah. more to the story, so you can kind of narrate stuff as well. I like so that. When I flipped one, like, I don't think the Cthulhu stuff was originally in it it might have been I'm mm-hmm. not entirely sure but I said that I was having I flipped a story coin to say that I was having recurring nightmares okay. about the thing so that I could have some prior knowledge yes, about it a little yes, bit yes. and that was something that I added in and then there was a bit where I wanted to these little crabs started coming out and I wanted to have anti-crabs bray <laughs> and nice. so this was like me trying to what? I wanted to see if you could really push it and what an experienced GM would do I was right. trying to be a bit yeah. of a dick yeah yeah and so I said oh, I, I had a flashback with me and Jamie where I flipped a story coin and me and him were in our apartment in 
Brooklyn. And, it, and I was saying, oh, it turns out the reason we're in this mining colony underground in this submarine is because of the crab apocalypse that was happening out of ground. And I said, I said uh, oh, yeah, um, don't ever forget, man, take this any crab spray. Everywhere and, you and go. Then, <laughs> yeah. He says, well, it turns out you were on a lot of drugs then, and that was a hallucination. Oh, right, fair enough. And so uh, you didn't have anti-crab spray, but what you did have was some mace that he gave you or something like this. Yeah, so I can't yeah. remember what it was, but it was something like that. So the GM gets final say. Exactly. Got you. Yeah. And I loved it. I yeah. absolutely loved it. Okay. I thought it was brilliant. It created the most great story. It does slow to a crawl. One thing that I, th- I would say is don't have massive combats. Mm. Don't overdo it with your enemies because that way it, it, it takes fucking ages but yeah. what you've got to do keep it quick keep it fun because if everyone's narrating their shit I was going to say it's going to take forever keep, uh, but get the party involved I suppose yeah yeah yeah. yeah. And, and but I absolutely loved it I thought it was brilliant Tony Fanning's a great GM and uh, I'm definitely going to pick it up and, and run it for you guys because yeah, there's yeah, a test drive for Terranoth online and I'll, I'll run you guys Wicked. through it dice, dice wise what are we talking price uh, oh um, I've got two sets Jamie gave it to no Jamie gave me two sets because he said if, if you're going to run it for your guys I'll give Take you some dice so, yeah, I've got, I've got them so we've got one, one thing, for GM and one for you guys cracking. one thing that I really like um, about the whole sort of system and the mechanics behind it are the story tokens so they originally start you've got two pools one sits with the players one mm-hmm. sits with the GM right. every time one's flipped mm-hmm. it goes into the other pool so okay. if all the players are, are using story tokens to either hinder the GM's stuff or he's to make their bit better yeah, yeah. then he's got everything Loans, yeah. and then he can start flipping tokens and, control, and basically yeah. they, all they do is they flip in between ah. so the more you make the GM flip the tokens more he can flip the, the more we can flip them back yeah. but it can only happen one on one so you can only flip it back one time against I each see. other okay but and they can be initiated at any time yeah so, yeah. so the, okay. the GM for for example the way this works in this deep madness game uh, which was yeah like this this happened kind of a lot so I was using them all the time because yeah. I love that mechanic and I was using it to upgrade my hits things like this yeah um, using story reasons which I won't get into because it'll take too fucking long the way I, I was using it I was constantly doing that right because I love them mm-hmm. I think they're great and then the GM was flipping them back so I was killing monsters left right and centre and it was happening or, or the team was all of this then he would flip them back and say like okay this one then just goes bleh and a bunch of eggs come out <laughs> so then more monsters were coming yeah, yeah. into the fight yeah. and so then we were running through trying to get to the oh, end because man. all these more monsters were coming out yeah. because he was flipping his coins yeah. so it really works to create a really interesting story because the balance is always there yeah. and it actually works really really well and building the dice pools it gets easier. Mm-hmm. See, what happened was during our first game, Stefan, he, he he was just reading our dice for us right. and saying, you've got two successes, this, that, and the other. And I, I, and what happened during the second game, I was drunk as fuck <laughs> and I was trying to read these dice, trying to interpret the chicken bones and, <laughs> yeah. and I, I just could, I could not. And I just, I looked at it and I, uh, there was What's a going on there. Yeah. fucking Tony, he, he upgraded my, uh, my dice. He put the difficulty to four. He upgraded one of them to a red and I rolled them and I just looked at it and I went, oh, for f- Fuck, so this is actually what happened. I went, oh, for fuck's sake, Tony, can you just fucking read these? <laughs> yeah. And he just went, nope, I'm not doing it. You interpret them. And he gave me this little card. Yeah. And it's like, it's so easy once you get it because mm-hmm. it's like, it's like this cancels this, this cancels this. You, it does take time, but mm-hmm. it is easy. That's the thing. Once you, once you get get it, you're like, okay, cool. And it did take me like ten seconds every time. But they were they that everyone at the table cheered. I went, uh, um, uh, uh. So I've got two successes, one failure, and everyone went, hey! <laughs> <laughs> it has to be taught! Yeah. And I was like, yeah, it was really fun. And I, I have to say, like, a massive thanks to them for being so welcoming and giving yeah. me that second chance because uh, I was I was such a shit player, but they, they did such a good job of welcoming mm. me, me along because I, I felt like such a noob. You know? I like yeah, the fact that Harrison explained to me that every turn, you know, because um, basically the, what Stefan did in our game is... To make it easier on us Nubians, yeah, he was just like, okay, I can. He he did actually say, you can even narrate what happens that I will. So he, uh, Stefan, kind of narrated what happened for us. Whereas at the game that Harrison played, he said that what they did, you know, Harrison was just like, oh, can you just tell me what happens? And they're like, nope, nope, you have to tell me, you have to play it out, man. Tell yeah. me, tell me a story as to what no, happened. I like that. So it was just like. Explain it to me. That's cool. I really like that. Or, so or that sometimes cool. it would be like a reasoning thing. So sometimes, like Tony would be like, "Do you guys mind if I take the reins on this one?" Mm. Or, but that's say, yeah. Apparently, yeah. that's the whole thing. It's 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 like it's a collaborative yeah. game. It's like fiasco on steroids. Yeah, I like yeah, it. So it's like if fiasco, if it was an RPG, that's yeah. the way exactly. I put it. And yeah. that, that's yeah. what's fucking cool. Yeah. Except it doesn't all come together at the end. It's right. more yeah. of a linear thing. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. yeah. yeah. The fiasco gets it's at the like end. Like a circle fiasco. And then this, yeah, this is this is every single thing is going to the plot. And it's all 
making sense. Mate, anything that's narrative heavy or is down to creativity, adding things, collaborative stuff, all box tick boxes for me. So you know I think I'd like it. I think you guys would love Genesis is because um, you guys always narrate your actions. Yeah. yeah you yeah. always do. And the good thing about this is you roll, then narrate, whereas mm-hmm. you guys, you always narrate, then roll. Yeah. And then, and then you're like, okay, uh, yeah, now, but now you get on your ass. This, yeah. The, yeah. This, the opposite way, it means you read the dice and now you can narrate you know the outcome actually what and happens. And then you narrate. Yeah, yeah I get so you. Yeah. Can say, you can say, oh, cool, I got this. Now I can do this fucking cool shit. Or, or it's just as fun to narrate spectacular failure yeah. <laughs> yourself. You know yeah, what I mean? That's, yeah. that's the cool thing because the failures, there's so many different options. Yeah. But the people, they say, of this say it's limiting but what you can actually do is really cool because like uh, two advantage and a failure can Mm -hmm. be so many different things and that's what it's cool it's like yeah there are limitations but working within those creates creativity and that's what's fucking cool yeah yeah I like but anyway we better leave it there because this has gone on for a while we'll 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 play it and then we'll do it on Podium so summarising Con and the Cobb I think it's a fucking great time Um, the very last thing we did is we went to the awards ceremony and got our awards and I have to say Andy Hopp he has a lot of charisma and uh, I want to thank him for the award thank you very much Andy most off the Cobb gamer for me and James. Yeah, we both got it. Had to fight to the death, but didn't. And then uh, we kissed on stage as we received. I made awards. a bit of a bad joke and it dropped like a bomb oh, on yes. the stage. It's fine. I, yeah. I said that James knows kung fu. I don't think I went well over well, but I did. <laughs> Except for that one guy who ran that game for you. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Game scratty guy. I was like, <laughs> but I did make a joke that went down well. I can't remember it. I can't remember what it was, but I did make one that went. Oh no, oh, no I said, it was when I... you were taking a mick out of Andy, saying I've met my heroes here. And then I pointed at Gary. But no, I, sa- I, I said I'd like to thank God, my mum, and mostly American Airlines for getting me here. <laughs> nice. But, nice. Yeah. So that's it for Con on the Cob. Brilliant. Right, next up we're going to go over to Electro Letters. Yes. Bye. In the future, you will be able to send a letter from anywhere on the planet. This is the future. This is the Electro Letter. So this is Electro Letters, where we read your emails or letters from around the world. And here we go. James? Yeah, so what we asked was, what's the weirdest thing you've ever witnessed at a Cayman convention? And these are the answers we got. The first one comes in from Trevor Hurst. And he says, I go to GaryCon. Every year I see full-grown men and women, some as old as senior citizens, full of joy and mirth. They act as if they are six years old on a Christmas morning for three days straight. Never mind the cosplay or whatever. Nothing is weirder than that. It is the best. I love how you read that like it was a children's story. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You're like, nothing is weirder than that. That. (laughs) The end. No, but that's so true, man. At this convention, people... Like, one of the things I wanted to say was our mate Jay, who we'd met for the first time there. He he turned up day one, right? And he he basically said... He he said... He put, like, six cans of beer on the table. And he he pointed at me. He's like... I don't usually drink this stuff, man. I don't drink a lot, but so so if I have one of these, I'm I'm gonna be real fucked up. And then and then like, <laughs> a like couple days later. two days later, he downed two bottles of whiskey, and he was like, "See, I, I drink this stuff all the time. I, 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 I don't know how not to party. I, I, I party every day. I've been, party, I've been partying for thirty years, man. I don't know how not to party." Yes, and then like, J-Rose. literally two two bottles down, he just gets up and he can barely stand. Oh my god! He had to, he had to go to bed, and then within and the next morning, he was supposed to be running rippers, and he just couldn't. He couldn't stand. <gasps> he couldn't do it. No. 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 Oh, he, what, he didn't run it? Yeah. He didn't run it. Oh, bless him. And everyone was acting like a child at this thing. Got so, it, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right, Trevor. Why not? It's crazy. Next one comes in from Eric Lamoury. He says, This year at Con and the Cobb, I saw a guy sleeping face down on the floor in the atrium at 5am. A tranny pirate, a gutter selling vendor, and Uncle Jay. I don't know. <laughs> so somebody's selling gutters, I guess? <laughs> yeah, no, no. It's in like uh, literal uh, gutters of a house. What? As in, you did, not, did you not see the vendors? You, we walked past them. There was a bathroom, bathroom selling, of course, tile That's selling. Need to con. Yeah, and there was like really weird vendors. Having a good here. weekend? Want a bath? <laughs> <laughs> so oh um, yeah, I mean, the, the, well, a tranny pirate. That's, that's I'm, into cool. that. yeah, that's I'm, I'm well into that's that. I'm well into that. Pretty cool. But the cool thing is, it, when with the with the guy f- lying face down, he got a picture of that. And I, when he says face down, he doesn't mean he was just having a good nap. The guy was literally just plank oh, like on no. the floor, face down. We like, didn't know if he was dead or not. <laughs> he, 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 might, he could still be there we don't know still be there. <laughs> right next one comes in from Philip Conway or Phil Con and he says uh, the weirdest thing he's seen is skinny Duke Nukem get into third base with chubby Sonya Blade <laughs> <laughs> And if we're talking about our exact fetishes here, <laughs> that's, that's my it. exact that's fetish. My, I'm down with that. 
Right, next one we got in from Matthew Imaginary Tooth Jones, and he says, I was at Dragon Con in Atlanta, Georgia, about eight to nine years ago, and there was a woman, mid late 40s, about four foot 12, 230 pounds, and wearing, wearing a leather skirt and two clear Ziploc bags of Skittles as a bikini top. Ooh. And lastly, she had Taste of Rainbow painted on her stomach. Oh. 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 Sign me up. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Did you get her name at all? <laughs> Let us know. Yeah, she, we need to get her on the podcast. <laughs> Zach Jenkins. Oh, comes. he must be out of prison. Who? Hey. Zach. Oh, he is, yeah. The Jenk. Zach He's Jen- back. What? Zach Jenkins. Is must back. be. Hey. He's on parole. Yeah, so, uh, Zach Jenkins, uh, is a big stranger around these parts, he says, I once saw a man at Origins Game Fair in Columbus, Ohio, wearing nothing but a rainbow tube top and a rainbow colored thong. <laughs> but you may have just wandered in from Columbus Pride Parade. That happens alongside Origins every year. No, no, no. Am I in the right place? No. Nope. <laughs> well, no, you are. You are actually, come, yeah, come, come on in. in. Come in, my hotel room number is. <laughs> right, who's next? Oh, uh, Jay Pearson. Oh. oh. So Jay Pearson comes in with uh, James Clark and I tapping heads. Want so to this explain is, more? Yeah, this is <laughs> yes, pretty sorry. funny. Outside, they both went... They both, we were drinking a lot. They were drinking a lot, Ooh. and they basically t- thrusted their penises towards each other. Oh, uh, okay. Clothed, right? Okay. But then when they tapped them together, they went, oh, I just... I actually felt it. I felt it. Wow. <laughs> and it didn't happen just once. But anyway, okay, uh, great yes. guy. <laughs> yeah. Cyclops. It sounds it. Cyclops. So this is Pearson. what I mean. When we talk about people acting like children, I yeah. don't think children would do that. But my point is, is that you, they, it's just, you just act the, like a the, fucking weirdo. It's the great. maturity goes out of window. Got it, don't you? Let your hair down. Disappears. Let, let your penis down. Let your penis out, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> next one in from Matt Stark, a.k.a. Frog Dick, says, the weirdest thing I've seen at a convention was a drunk Asian table surfing in the middle of a game. It's funny that a lot of these stories seem to revolve around you, James. Yeah, you, James. James, to be fair, he was the life of the party at this con, yeah. and he, he just didn't stop. He didn't have an off button. Yeah, ain't no, we know that. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, the more drunk I get, the more excitable I yes, get. Yes, indeed. Oh, <laughs> mate, it was, it was crazy. He just he didn't stop, like, con- at any point. Did yeah. you insult any uh, highly esteemed right, uh, uh, artists? Like, yeah, yeah, I was insulting oh, Andy to his face. Oh, good, that's all right. Not it. just me, then. Thank- <laughs> thankfully, thankfully, it didn't get too bad, but yeah. it was that point like literally the bad friday at the, the bad friday we had these two very nice people come along and they were just sitting with us just for just to t- try and meet us right and we were trying to be nice to them and like like welcome them and we just said oh yeah we got some moonshine we started pouring out the moonshine <laughs> of you right? did. Yeah. and we were pouring it out we were giving people shots in that and james uh, james he was either at 100 percent volume or one right and i was just like james be quiet for god's sake he was just shouting the whole time <laughs> and i said uh, and i was like Pouring out the shots, and James went, Jamie, take this shot. And, ja- and then Jamie was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm cool, man, I'm cool, man. And he went, drink that or I'll rape you. <laughs> <laughs> and these two oh, guys no, that yeah. had just sat with us were just like, oh, my God. what Neck it and leave. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Next one comes in from Pete Malloy, and he says, uh, a gamer who was clean, smelt nice, and didn't have a rucksack. Now, that, <laughs> that, now that is weird. <laughs> that's weird. Hey, that's the weird I thing. ain't never seen that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so final one comes in from Owen Lean. He says, So my experiences of gaming conventions have been tame. However, I did see something completely mental at a magician's convention. It was the 2003 Magicians World Championships and and is just and is just left a lecture. God learn to write, man. <laughs> I, I even ra- tried to edit this, to be honest. Oh, God. Sorry. I, I just left a lecture. I rounded the corner only to see a goldfish finding a playing card. There was a large tank and a whole bunch of cards spread out beneath it. The magician would ring a bell and the fish would slowly would slowly soon downwards before resting over the card you just chose. He did it by forcing the card and then he would ring the bell. He secretly turned on an electromagnet under the card. The goldfish had been fed iron filings oh. for two weeks and so was magnetic. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, was, I read that. Animal cruelty? Uh, yeah. Like, oh, shit, man. So good. Animal cruelty there. Brilliant. Lovely. But I suppose that, that is weird to see it at a magician's that's weird. convention. Yeah. A kind yeah. of fucked up way to make it work, man. Yeah, so thanks for that, Owen. Mm, really <laughs> made us feel... Uh, Do not condone this kind of action. No, we don't. We don't, know. We should feed that guy iron filings. For two weeks, see how he, see how he feels. <laughs> see how he like run around with a magnet, yeah, giant magnet. <laughs> Just see him fly through the air. So, Nick, we understand you've got a couple of questions for us. Yeah, I'm going to ask you a few questions about America side in general. Um, so, first off, what was your favourite fatty food? 
Oh, you know what? There was one place that we really, really liked, and and I have to I have to put it down. It's one of my favourite places because y- y- in terms of cheapness and mm-hmm. goodness, mm-hmm. I've got to say steak and shake. Steak mate. and shake. Steak and we shake. We went there twice. Yeah. We is went... this a chain or is it a restaurant? I believe or? it's a chain. Yeah. Okay? Right. And we had one just outside at one of our hotels in Cleveland, and it's it's five dollars, right? Ooh. And you can get a double burger and fries and a drink for five dollars. Yeah. But then you have to tip because it's bloody America. But oh, anyway, yeah. Point <laughs> yeah is, even with that. Okay, it's still worth it. And the woman there who served us in the Cleveland one uh, near the Hampton Inn, got to say, can't remember her name, but she was absolutely lovely. And the cool thing was, is that when we went in there with Gary, um, who's one of our friends, he managed to charm her into allowing us to drink beer in there because it's a family restaurant. Ah, yeah, because they us, don't serve beer. Yeah, she gave us the non-clear cups and we just poured our own beer in there. Ah, yeah, yeah, so we certainly so, managed to have this feast with Gary and drinking beer. Oh, Amazing. yeah. So it, the Ohio shake, Steak and Shake... Go yes. there, go there, because it's amazing. It is, well, it's the second one oh. is is got to say New York pizza. Yeah. Oh my oh, god! Shit. Was it a pizza pie? It was uh, the 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 little the you, place was called Little Italy, and, right. and it was and the, it was in China, uh, Soho in mm-hmm. uh, in New York. And you know the giant right. pizza slices. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, the three, ones they have to fold because they're yeah, so yeah. big. Yeah. And each one is is two dollars ninety five for a giant slice of pizza. It <laughs> was fucking the tasty. best. Yeah. And the best cool pizza thing we've is, ever eaten. The explanation that we heard for why they're pizza is so good mm-hmm. was from our tour guide and she was from Brooklyn she had the proper accent and she goes you know why our pizza bases are so good it's because of the water because of the water and then she went yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's because of the water was it fucking you. champagne on tap mate it was Brilliant. fucking it was amazing so yeah there you go why are pizza so good in Brooklyn because of the water yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love it okay next question what was the um, what was the most embarrassing thing both of you did on holiday Oh, that's that's a toughie. I don't know, man. Harrison first. I've got two. <laughs> See, I don't know if I did anything that embarrassing. Okay, I'll give you my two. Go on. Yeah, you can do. You can have both then. So yeah. when I arrived on the third of November in JFK in New York, it was my friend Helen's birthday. I was out there with Helen oh, and good. Luke. So we, I arrived. I got to hers, and then we basically just uh, had a very small chat and went immediately out because it was her birthday shindig. Mm-hmm. We went to this place up Green Point, uh, still in New York, and it, it was called the place called Spritz and House Thirty Three. It was a Spritz. It was a German. House drinking hall very right? cheap drinks there aren't they James yeah yeah, right, yeah let me get to this so uh, <laughs> what happened was uh, we're all drinking uh, obviously getting beers and that Luke was getting in quite a few rounds and I was just like alright it's obviously my turn for a round and uh, normal British thing what do I do so firstly I go to the bar and then I get me Helen and Luke each a stein and for those who don't know what that is it's a two pint of it's a two pint glass mm-hmm. um, usually with German beer in it mm-hmm. uh, but then I also got everyone at the table at the time there was eight of us a shot of tequila Oh, uh, now obviously their shot glasses are rather large oh, put it on the shit. tray everything was put in front of me and the bill came to uh, $120 and hell. I was just like holy shit that's a good night out in England so it wasn't just sort of that was the embarrassing thing the actual embarrassing thing that kind of happened oh that wasn't the embarrassing no, thing no that was just a dumb move which led to the embarrassing thing yeah so obviously at that point I'd been just completely jet lagged hadn't eaten very well like in terms of a full meal and everything and I was drinking like a fucking elephant yeah uh-huh. Um, and so at one moment I thought that I, I needed to just remove myself because I thought I felt really really unwell I thought <laughs> I might be sick so what did I do I grabbed my coat I went outside and I slept on a bench for an hour wow <laughs> and it should become thing. a bum well done <laughs> Oh, yeah. Day one. I'm surprised you didn't get robbed. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. That's exactly. My mum's husband said the same thing. He, he, he was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe you didn't get robbed." And then uh, in Brooklyn, and James James said that he put his hood over his head and like went all like kind of like small on the bench. And I was just like, "Well, he must have just looked like a homeless." Yeah, 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 yeah. Money. I, 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 yeah. I'll tell you what, it's the smartest embarrassing thing I did because of that hood move. Amazing. All right, cool. So, what's embarrassing thing number two? Yeah, oh, embarrassing thing number two was the bad day on the Friday. Oh, when you oh, were yeah, when I was, I was going, I was going mad. And I was, rape. Yeah, yeah, yeah basically yeah, that. You yeah. all heard the story now, but it was basically <laughs> that. But Harrison actually took me to bed. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, because I, some... I did, I did the bench move. I did literally the bench move. It's I just, all small. I just sat there, and then it all hit me, and I just went to Harrison and went, "I've just got to." And then and I then put he, my... yeah, he started putting his head down on the table. It's about two a.m. at this point. He went, "I just need to, I just need to." And he started, he started putting his Damn head down on the table. And I'm, right, James, you're going to bed, and I just took him back to the room. Yeah. 
Oh. I didn't crawl out of my pit until about midday the next day. Oh, really? Yeah. Ooh. Okay, best alcoholic beverage consumed on holiday? Yingling. Yingling. Yingling? They, so this is a, um, a an alcohol, I believe, that's brewed in Pennsylvania. So Yingling was like my staple out there because yep. this is a beer that's brewed there. And it was amazing. Like, really, really nice, um, just standard lager, right? Mm -hmm. And it's cheap and cheerful and really nice. But one of the nicest ones that I had... So I went on a brewery tour in in, yeah, um, nice. in Hershey, Pennsylvania, in this brewery called Trokes. And uh, that we got to sample so many beers there. And I had a um, chocolate and coffee porter that wow. they had there. Yeah. And that was fucking incredible. Yeah. But one of the coolest things I had there was unfiltered lager. Ooh. And so we had it like straight from the source, Jeez. unfiltered. Hoppy as hell. Hoppy as fuck, <laughs> yeah, right? Fair. And it was it was like really cloudy. And that was really great to try. And the whole place just smelt like hops. It was like, it was amazing. And it makes me sound like such a hipster. What killed me though is when you turned around and said that Stella Artois is seen as an artisan beer out there. Yeah, and we call <laughs> like it wife beater over it. Yeah, we literally call it wife beater in this country. <laughs> and it costs like five quid a pint. Yeah, only yeah. like really alcoholic people drink it. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And James, um, it, we went to a posh restaurant in in the airport on the way back. And yeah. James bought a twenty three ounce uh, uh, Stella, and it was like oh, eight dollars. Yeah. Fuck it, yeah. Hell. So anyway, that's it for electro letters. Um, thank you very much for sending them in. We appreciate those. We really do. Now let's get on to the outro. Oh yeah. We're gonna have a new scale here. I'm actually gonna have it made digitally, where it's on a scale of. Goblins, you know, is it charging into a goblin's nest, hacking them to pieces, or is it just going, you know, around the goblins? Is it kissing goblins, even though you still stab them, you give them a kiss, or is it catching them in bed with a goblin? And then the final scale, is you gonna marry a goblin? So, if you want to contact us, you can do. We're on tabletoptwats at gmail.com. We're also on Facebook, which is uh, Facebook forward slash tabletop t. We're on Google Plus, which is ending soon, and we're on MeWe as well. We're so also contact on us Twitter. On there. Which is at Tabletop Twats. Yeah. And of course, if you want to chuck us a buck because you like what we do, go... Sling us a buck. Yeah, patreon.com forward slash Tabletop Twats. We've had some new people uh, come over recently. Yeah, thank Uncle you very Jay much. Yeah, thank you very it. much, Uncle Jay. Look forward to becoming part of our AP. Yeah, totally. Oh, and Trevor Hurst, of course. And Trevor Hurst, Trevor of Hurst. course. Yep. So, um, of course, with this show, we don't like to leave you with nothing to think about. Of course while, not. You know, while you're waiting for the next episode. Because so what I'm else like, are you going to do? What else are you going to do while this podcast ain't out? Lay on a nothing. table. Yeah. No. Sleep face down on the floor. Right, exactly. Become a tranny pirate. Well, that's something. <laughs> well, that's something, yeah. But uh, here we go. So I'm going to give you something to think about before the next episode comes out. And this is thus, right? So um, here it is. If somebody tells you they're a pathological liar, should you believe them? <laughs> <laughs> and that leaves last one last thing to be said. While I was at the convention, right, Andy Hopp came up to me and he signed my book. Yeah. And what he wrote in there was something very weird indeed, something I didn't expect, something that blew my mind. When oh, yeah. I saw it written down, yeah. you never believe what it said. What, what did, did it say? say? What did it say? Chicken McBosh! <laughs> Yeehaw! Yeehaw!